commentate that very fortunately. And uh, honestly speaking, this is a very stacked tournament. I decided to, you know, take an early loss just so I can commentate. So here we are going into it. Uh, losers top eight. This match is for seventh place. Uh, both of these players falling. The losers a little bit uh, earlier than I'd imagine they would hope. But uh, here they are anyway, just uh, trying to prove themselves. Nope. Apparently this is top eight. It's all Devin's fault. Um, but this matchup, ooh, so this matchup itself, I've seen, we've seen it quite a bit, and we've seen Frozen both, you know, be successful in it and also kind of fail, and there are lots of Yoshis in the region to get the practice against. But Suarez is a different breed, you know, a lot more patient, a lot more focused on ledge trapping. The neutral is kind of the strongest part of his gameplay. So let's see if that's something that, ooh, Frozen will actually be able to deal with. Oh, never mind. This punish game's beautiful. Uh, the chase right there was absolutely nice. Uh, so used to seeing Suarez like on the ground in like, high percent situations, as he usually going for a stop with the ledge trap. But here we are putting Pyramithra above him and now getting the stock lead. Let's see how much extra credit he can get here. Yeah, like this. The fact that Pyra was the... It makes sense why Pyra is the switch. You know, Frozen needs the kill. But, much slower character. You can see that Suarez keeping his distance. Able to get uh, lots of chip damage, possibly. While I say that, he's basically been trapped in the corner. Oh, oh for forever. Oh, this is this is danger zone. <laughs> yeah, these triple digit percents. Even still, I mean, Yoshi's a little bit heavier, so it's not that much of a big of a deal. So, baiting out these a lot, like laggy options from Pyra is going to net him a good extra credit right there. Beautiful spacing right there. That jump fade back into the back air. Able to take it for Frozen and taking that stock right now was absolutely pivotal. I love that Yoshi's tongue. It is a tether grab, meaning it has a lot more range than you'd think. And a lot of people will get trapped or caught at the ledge, rather, uh, just holding shield. Yeah, excellent command grab right there, but then using a special to break out of it. It's a really good burst option. That was a big one, too. Uh, had he missed that, then that would have been an easy punish for Yoshi. But here we are. Really good lead right here, and that's going to be it. Oh, stock. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was uh, sort of a calculated mash or not. I know that, you know, Yoshi's a lot of the time they will just down B because opponent pops out. And you don't have to think about it as much. You know, you're just like, I'm going to down B and hope they get hit by it. Yeah, but that's uh, Suarez doing a lot better than he was doing on the first stock. So has a good opportunity here to open up more damage. You saw 66% extra cut last. And here we go. Oh, wow. What a tech situation there. Beautiful timing on that get-up attack. And this is something we see a lot from Suarez also. His use of that command grab, the egg lay. At the very least, it conditions his opponent to stop shielding so much. And once that happens, then his really hard-hitting moves, things like forward air, oh, that sort of thing can come out uh, to play and, oh, do big work. Oh, what a conversion right there with the Pyra uh, getting the up beat and off to the top. Uh, what a beautiful stock, making this an even game. Yeah, even by stocks, but it still feels like Suarez is at least has figured out something about the matchup that Frozen has yet to really grasp. Right as I say that, some really solid low percent Mithril combos. This isn't something we actually have seen that much. Oh, is that death? Oh, man, that's the drawback. Even though you got all that percent with Mithril, you are six units lighter, and that's going to be the confirm into the KO off the top. Yeah, and plus the rage that you just tacked on to Yoshi. I think that might have helped him. Uh, and that is, I believe, a very narrow window. The forward air to up smash to actually connect like that, unless it was a read. Doesn't even look like it. Yeah, that's beautiful stuff from uh, Suarez, knowing what his options are in order to get the kill and just finding them, sneaking them in. Yeah, man, Suarez uh, getting back in the uh, groove of this offline era, man. Uh, I guess a new chapter in uh, what we're going to see for like New York Smash in general. We saw just how deep he went through losers on Wednesday, basically almost getting the grand finals, but uh, just falling, like, honestly, like a hit short away from uh, getting there. But now he's up 1-0 here in the losers' top eight of the monthly. Yeah, looking pretty good right now. Let's see if Frozen can adapt. I would actually like to see a lot more of those low percent Metro combos, the juggles in particular. Ooh, but these low percent Yoshi combos. Oh, that's like we don't get to see them because, well, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the fact that these characters can, Yoshi, even if he drops something, the fact that he can stay on you and just continue to apply pressure just with the speed Ooh. and everything. Yeah, the egg coming out, they're breaking the multi-hit, and these two are just going hit for hit on one another, percent for percent, basically. Oh, trying to catch a shield drop there, perhaps, but Frozen just confidently holding a shield. 
Yeah, I think uh, Suarez was actually trying to get the multi-hit out of the back here to confirm into that KO, but not dropping shield. Amazing stuff. And wow. Yeah, there we go. The extra six units making a difference there on the Pyra. Yeah, but now we actually see the swap to Mithra. No Legend Invincibility doesn't matter. That down smash not connecting. This should be it. <gasps> the up tilt, just a slightly wrong hitbox of it, means that Frozen is going to be continuing to stay alive. That up smash, not enough to do it, but here comes the Pyra. Yeah, these weight unit differences are actually making a big deal right there. Had that up tilt connected on the Pyra, it would have sent Pyra a little bit like less than Mithra. I think true confirming uh, the KO, but now using that to Frozen's advantage, getting a stock lead here. Oh, that's... We're seeing some moves come out, sort of anticipatory moves from Suarez, and that means he's not able to react to the more punishable things. Right there, though, back air in the corner, just so reliable as a kill setup. Yeah, every hit of that back air is just money for Yoshi. We get to see a lot of that last week, so uh, good stuff to Suarez. Now making this yet another even game, and then this is it. Like, these, like, taller characters are amazing for Yoshi, because now we get the, like, red and butters, and the chase is real from Suarez. Technically, he's the only character in the game with a chain grab. <laughs> it just requires a lot of effort in order to pull it off. Oh, uh, can you imagine, like, an entire stock of just chasing that? <laughs> oh, I... I, uh, I could only dream. That was, oh, all right. Very risky going for aerials uh, when you are lower percent Yoshi, because if you get hit out of them as you're recovering, uh, I'm talking specifically about the aerials while you're recovering, the armor expires as soon as you hit any button. So you could die at extremely earlier percents if you're not careful. Oh, wow, this chase from Suarez is huge, but not going to intercept the recovery. But oh, wow, catching the egg on the getup and another. I love this, just continuing to frame trap in the air on those, uh, oh, on the ledge. Suarez is looking really good right now, but it's the sort of thing, he's at 170%. He does have to be careful. He can die. <gasps> yeah. And that's it. Yeah, we're seeing a huge difference maker here uh, between Suarez and Frozen is the level of patience that Suarez is showing. But there we go. Once again, air dodging to the ledge and getting caught by the power up smash. Yeah, broke the armor with the back air. Suarez maybe could have done a directional air dodge down towards the ledge, but that had its own risk, and, you know, I don't think he was quite expecting the up smash. That's one thing that I noticed about Suarez is when he goes for those egg setups at the ledge, oh, uh, he, uh, he basically goes for, like, the guaranteed, like, trapping, which sometimes means that he's not able to actually confirm off of a landed egg, uh, which has a lot of reward. Ooh. Uh, just for the compliment, uh, as far as his punish is right there, but then he does the, uh, <laughs> the side V and not able to get too much off of it. That's going to be hit. Wow. Oh, wait. He lied. He's alive. Just barely. And oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, looking a little trigger happy here. Oh, goodness. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> uh, Pyro, though, going to hang on there. Ooh. No. One of the dangers. So people love to talk about how Yoshi shield. Oh, he can't get shield poked. The danger is that oh, oh, oh. Oh, no danger in sight for, uh, are we doing top best of five? Yep. Just best of five. Wow. Best of five, uh, top 12 for the monthly. Noise. So the set before they, the, the qualifiers they got into to get here were also best of five. Okay, so we're going to be getting to see more of this match, but I was just mentioning briefly that Yoshi, because he can't get shield poked, sometimes that means he gets shield broken. You know, when he, he can sometimes be like, I'm shielding moves, and especially those big, fiery moves from Pyra can uh, whittle your shield down. And if you're another character, you'll notice that. But if you're Yoshi, if you're not careful, yeah, you can get popped. Yeah, but, oh, we're switching to the old man right now for a second. Uh, going down 2-0 here in loser's bracket. Why not? This is actually a, a character that's been giving Yoshi a problem for a very long time. However, I think the, between the nerfs, uh, that Palu did receive, and just overall Yoshi's figuring out the matchup a little better. I this not a struggle the way that it used to be, not at all. I'd say. Yeah, man, Palutena is definitely a character where you have to like put a lot of like work into because like every character under the sun is gonna know the Palutena matchup, so you better be ready to surprise them. Yeah, and the fact that she doesn't have reliable kill setups anymore. It really makes a big difference, especially against a character like Yoshi, who is deceptively heavy. He actually has the same weight as Captain Falcon. Oh, nice job cleaning up the stock there, but he has the same weight as Captain Falcon and Link. Yeah, the Palutena, I'm not sure if this is like the play right now, but then again, I don't know. Pyramithra, uh, definitely an amazing character. We're seeing a lot of the s s DLC Pack 2 come out in the play, but wow, what a landing right there, getting down safely uh, is Suarez. 
We're seeing a lot of these full hop down airs, which is kind of a call out on Ooh. Suarez's part. <gasps> but yeah, they're two, they're right in the face. Another one of those. He egg lays right in his. Yeah, so that's the risk of full hop down air is the fact that Paltain has a lot of aerials that can very easily contest it. Yeah, and uh, I've seen Frozen play pretty trigger happy, whether it's with Pyramithra or with Paltain. I've never seen a lot of Smash Tech come out, and they're getting punished. Wow, it just feels like. But in the neutral, in the spacing Ooh. game, in everything, Suarez just has this totally figured out. That's yeah. going to be even more damage. But he knows the war is not done yet. He's, uh, wow, just like uh, dialed all the way. And you can see in the player camp, he's incredibly focused despite being three stocks to one. I mean, I see no reason why he should. Oh, okay. Drop focus at this point. You know, Frozen, still a fantastic player. And if you underestimate her, Oh, things can turn sour very quickly. Yeah, Palatine, here we go. The early percent by the Yoshi. Gonna break out of that scenario. Very fortunate for Yoshi. Oh, wow, just jumping out of that one. That's definitely Yoshi privilege right there. Yeah. Oof. And continuing to get all of this damage in. 62% already on Frozen. Yeah, Frozen actually has to make a really good use of the stock while they're going for the hard commitment right there, but can kind of get away with it when you're two stocks to one. Yeah. Oh. Those opportunities are afforded to you, and it's it's interesting that he's going for this mixture of, you know, hard reads like that. Oh, no. But the ledge trapping is honestly where most of the bread and butter that bacon is made. Yep, uh, that's where Suarez shines, and we're seeing Suarez advancing 3-0 to top six here at the Xeno Saga 34. Yeah, and I will say that Suarez is looking really good tonight. Like, I haven't seen him play like this in quite a while. And yes, he's in the loser side of things at the moment, but nonetheless, like, I'm very excited to see what he might be able to do from, uh, for the rest of the bracket. Yeah, just like pulling up the bracket, uh, yeah, he's already met his seed. Because, uh, he lost to the third seed, which was Sinji in winner's quarters as a sixth seed. Uh, 3-1, but, uh... Uh, maybe he'll get a chance to get revenge and maybe push it and break past his seed because he was able to this past week on Wednesday. But yeah, man, welcome back, everybody. Here's Xeno Saga 34. That was one side of the loser's top eight. That's unfortunate for Frozen finishing in seventh, but uh, still an incredibly good showing to make it this far considering how hard this tournament actually was. I think very shortly we're going to see uh, probably Vivi versus the winner of Dill and D Dog. Now, D Dog's been taking some names lately, so I actually. Not until they recently. Yeah, not sure, because he was, you said uh, he was taking a break, and uh, I know he's uh, like, to at least to keep warm, he's been streaming a little bit as well. He does uh, have a Twitch stream, so. Sinji, uh, going to see the Pac Man against Zamba, the Rob right here. Uh, definitely his best character by far, and then. Uh, these two just kind of going at it. Yeah, and you know, the interesting thing is that both of these characters kind of known for, oh, you know, people think, oh, they camp, they throw projectiles, but both of them have incredible boxing game. You know, uh, Pac-Man's a little more aerial boxing, but, I mean, we all know what Rob Down Tilt looks like. Yeah, man, you see a lot of touch of death options from a Rob, so you kind of want to, like, keep Rob out but at the same time all these like low percent combo strings they kind of just like have the high knockback that Pac-Man just like thrives with in the I don't know I think we're gonna get a very unique set yeah I, you know one thing that I love to watch when Sinji plays is that he does not wing it you know he has a game plan against every single character every single player like right now the way that he's using trampoline to escape from these neutral airs that come his way just oh though Oh, what a conversion. The perfect landing with that neutral air and catching the knockback with the side beat. And that's a really early stock for Pac-Man. Yeah, and Pac-Man can take early stocks like that, but it's a lot less consistent than the uh, the, men you know, the menace that is Rob. And yeah. now he has to figure out how to actually get a kill on his own. He has Bell charged up, I believe. Yeah, there it is, but not actually connecting. Zomba too cognizant knows that it's uh, what Sinji's looking for right now. Yeah, a load of extra credit right there already, 100% and counting. Azamba is running away with this game Wait, one. What? Yeah, wow. No, no, he didn't hit the trampoline. He DI'd out oh. and he didn't hit his own trampoline. I know that that's something that normally Sinji's like, oh, I don't care about Rob down there because, you know, I up B and then, you know, oh, I just get hit back right into my up B. But I guess he. Oh, 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 is he dead? Is yeah, that game? All right, game two, let's go. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sinji's getting, getting started. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, they both made it here to winner's semis. They both played a lot of opponents, and they both made it here to meet their seeds. But uh, Zamba's on something else right now for game one. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, remember that this match, like, look at the percents before this happened. Uh, Sinji was foot. definitely, you know, had a really good game plan that he was playing to. It was effective. It was working. And then he dies at these really early percents. And... Yeah, look at that. He just barely missed his own trampoline. Oh my god. And that must have been from that must have been from DIing out. And another Nair at 57%. Wow. Yeah. You gotta be careful in the corner right there. So that's uh something that Sinji's gotta be more wary of, I think, because uh Sinji lost the first stock, so it kind of like let Zamba snowball the lead into that three stock victory. Yeah, it also felt like once he no longer had the lead, whatever effective game plan he had was no longer an option, and that's where we saw him really start to struggle. And in this game, kind of doesn't have a lead to begin with here. Although they are going very even, very back and forth, and it seems like Sinji is a little bit more confident. Ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. he's dead. No. He's not dead. Oh, right. Yeah. That, um, the, uh, the Rob Saibi, the Roto arm, very high base knockback, not very high knockback growth. Yeah, keeping it on stage right there, I think he would have had to connect it off stage. And that's why I was thinking, like, I think forward smash would have been more reliable there. But either way, it's still good damage. Oh, what a chase. Jumping over that trap with the trampoline and then catching the, you know, sharking with the up air. That's stock one going in Zama's favor. Yeah, and now Sinji is in a very similar position he was in last game. Even worse now because there's a lot less percent on Zamba. And he's... It, look at these. Neutral air, neutral air. They're just not being contested by Sinji. He's struggling to find out a way to actually challenge the base part of Zamba's, like, neutral, his game plan. Okay, yeah, gonna fall off the edge there for just a moment. And again, this is it, man. Uh, when you're fighting these zoner matchups, it's like, it's gonna snowball one way or the other. That's why the first stock is so important. Ooh, wow. And that, that's something I like, also notice that when you're fighting Pac-Man, it's just like Pac-Man can sometimes have a hard time KOing. <gasps> did you see that little, little cute thing where he did the up smash and then the water pushed him, canceling the lag of the up smash, and then he, you know, managed to get, I think it was a back air or something like that. Cute, but didn't get him to kill. Uh, He's sweet. still looking for it. Yeah, uh, these commitments are going to start coming out from Sinji in order to just bring this to the even. Uh, now without the fruit, ooh, I kind of gave you that up for free. Uh, if you get the fruit, kind of these uh, Pac-Man kind of helpless, but there we go. You gave back the fruit. Here he goes. He's going to use it in advantage. Yeah. I will say that I've talked to Sinji before, and he actually a lot of the times likes it when an opponent just grabs the fruit if they have no idea what they're doing. Because, oh, I mean, yes, we know how much fruit can do. I mean, look here. Look at all of the, the, the low percent damage already Sinji's racked up. But your options are still limited. And if Sinji knows your options are limited and you're not used to that, then he can play around that and it can give him just as many openings as a fruit would. Yeah, definitely a good chase so far. Uh, just one advantage. They get 27, but he needs to do a little bit more than that if uh, Sinji wants to stand a chance and make this a 1 1 scenario. Oh. Kind of scouting out that panic option. Yeah, oof. Just kind of giving up the Galaxy and the fact that he got clipped by that gyro meant that he lost his access to it. Still managing to get some nice, solid combos here, but Sinji's down by about 40%, and oh, he might be down by a stock, just barely hanging on. Absolutely. Oh, wow, getting a little bit of sharking action right there, but not able to close it out until I say that. No, oh, wow, the DI is perfect and way too low for that up air. Ooh, now, one thing, actually, that we might see that we haven't really seen Ooh. yet, that's beautiful, um, but the item play of specifically grabbing the opponent's items because Sinji has a lot of experience, you know, holding one of those items and tossing them around. And Zomba does as well. Yeah, I, I think Zomba was just playing around a little bit too much right there, unfortunately falling there. And now 192 here on Pac-Man. Up throw might be enough here if Rob can get a grab. Oh, definitely has to be wary of the grab. But Rob's grab range, oh, surprisingly terrible. Uh, neutral is range, though. <laughs> Uh, you can just kind of throw it out right there, and that's what Zama's doing to get these uh, strings. Yeah, you get the stock, and you get another 24% for good measure. Oh, wow, though. Getting caught between the hydrant and the forward smash. Oh, that forward tote just barely whiffing. Oh, wow. And this might be... Okay, I like that. Sinji recognizing that whatever damage he was going to get for, like, chasing him from the bell stun wasn't worth having the bell in hand. Because if he does manage to hit him on the ground near the side, that forward smash probably will kill. 
Oh, I didn't even know he could reset that back in his pocket. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, like, usually you can throw that, like, once or twice uh, to begin with, and then uh, I guess you kind of just reset it right there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times he wants to be holding it because it's less frames to actually throw it. Um, but if you put it away, your opponent can forget about it. You know, when the bell is in their face, they're obviously thinking, oh, i got to watch out for bell, but... The last stock scenario is yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sinji doing a really good job making that comeback start to happen, but I mean that's what we we've already seen that happen twice now. That was a little bit more of a uh, like a raw side B, just went drop zone side B though. But yeah, look at that. Sinji was not expecting it. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance to the blast. So that's a 2-0 a advantage for Zamba. One game away from winners finals here at the monthly Xeno Saga 34. I will say that. Even though Sinji's, you know, down 0-2 right now, it does feel like his game plan is starting to come together a little bit more cohesively. The big issue is he's getting blown up at like 60. In game one, it happened to him twice. And in game two, even, you know, he had the lead. It felt like he was, you know, doing a really good job. And then he went up off stage, wasn't careful, and just died. So if he's able to avoid those sorts of things, then I could very conceivably see him making the reverse 3-0. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th three of his six stocks taken, probably like at 60% just because he's in the corner or off stage. So, Sinji, you got to be more, uh, I guess, just careful in, in those scenarios. But this is still winner's bracket. Even if he loses this set, he's still got some more life in him. I mean, technically, he has life of him, a life in the loser's bracket. But I would, nobody wants to be in there right now. The heavy hitters and losers are... Uh, <laughs> The winner of this gets it to uh, manages to get to winner's finals. You know, guaranteed third place. A lot is on the line right now. And I know that Zomba, you know, he's been placing top two consistently, wants to be repeating that sort of make it very consistent. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, this early game is... Uh, honestly, Sinji might be safer in the hundreds than he is at, like, 60%, you know? Uh, it's really hard to say because... You know, at the 60s, yes, you can get, like, Nair, you know, side bead. But at the same time, yeah, these ledge traps become so much scarier. Back air is now, an, is now a threat. Um, oh, but, yeah, he doesn't care. Actually, yeah, Sinji doing a really good job playing around those kill options that Rob normally has. Yeah, that's not, like, the second stock Sinji in the last game. And I think that's what Zama's just trying to, like, keep in his pocket his tricks when it really matters. There we go. Uh, a good sharking scenario. Zamba really good at, like... Just putting, uh, I guess, Sinji in a bad spot. Well, I, I like the fact that uh, Zombo held forward when Sinji was not expecting it. Mm -hmm. um, he, Sinji, you saw him throw down the apple. He was expecting Zombo to be a little bit more center stage, but he jumps or he just runs right through and got underneath for that up air. Really good pickup for Zomba, and now he can start doing what we've already seen him do before. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't hate it, man, because the, the option select was there to uh, take a stock at 53%. So, just losing the first stock right there, Zamba. Uh, I guess, you know, good amount of extra credit. Yeah, I mean, Sinji. The thing is, extra credit against Sinji is really valuable because once Sinji has a lead and is able to play to that, he becomes so, so much harder to deal with. So, maintaining the lead for yourself, keeping Sinji the one, you know, trying to, you know, make the business happen, that's going to be really important for him, and that's what he's doing. <gasps> Sam has been very sneaky this entire set. This entire stock, he's been looking for just like options to just close out the stock. But now Sinji avoiding the majority, and that's going to be it. With uh, wow, uh, at least closing the gap and putting Zamba in a really good, like uh, closer to even scenario. Oh man, Sinji! Yeah, <laughs> both these guys know that this this is the moment where. It it can go either way. If that bell connects, oh, you know, that would definitely be Zomba dead. But, oh, yeah, there's so many moves that Rob also has access to that could end Sinji right now. Sinji, though, trapping him in the corner. Oh, the gyro bounce. And a laser on the platform situation. This next stock such a big deal. That's going to be it, yeah. Off the platform, off the top. And now Zomba one stock away from winner's finals. Woo, here we go. Woo, yeah. Big low percent damage here. 35% already on Sinji. And Sinji, with the loss of that rage, he's going to have to work even harder to get a kill right now. 
Yeah, oh. I'm looking for that bell. The bell is going to be key. Well, not the key. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, there it is. Yeah, there oh, yeah, is there the key. key. <laughs> right. The key is going to be key. Uh, but so oh. Sinji now kind of suffering. He needs to close up the stock. He needs to get a game on the board. Otherwise, Zama is going to advance as projected. <gasps> oh, interesting right Ooh. there. <laughs> that gyro actually preventing Sinji from engaging in the pressure that he wanted to. And now 83% almost oh, dying. Oh, oh. Ah, oh. All right. No tech. There we go. This is a chance for Sinji to get a game on the board. Yeah, and I mean, it also shows adaptation. Sinji was dying to those roto arms before, and now he turned it into a stock for himself. Possibly the beginnings of a comeback here. Yeah, one opening later, and that's good. 40%. Uh, Sinji playing a lot better right now. Ooh, I like that. I'm actually curious why he went for the dash attack there. Uh, it might uh, have been for stage control to try and catch Rob the next landing. But he could have at least gotten another jab in. But, I mean, Sinji's looking really good. This might possibly happen. You know, a game on the board would be fantastic for him. The sour oh. spot of that is actually pretty good for uh, Sinji. Oh, the back air, that hitbox is just so, uh, it's it just <laughs> so, so hateful, man. Oh, watch out. He's specifically going for the sour spot. That's actually so smart. Because otherwise, Sinji would just get knocked right back into his trampoline and be able to recover. But all of that rinse repeat damage now has Sinji sitting at 155%. He has to be really scared of a grab. No. No, no way. way, he's alive! Yeah, across the stage is not enough, but still, Sinji bringing it all the way back, potentially. Oh no, again, playing with fire, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Did you see Pac Man's <laughs> face when he got hit by that? Oh, I know we're gonna see it again. I definitely saw that though. That, the, the KO screen looks so sad. Like, he just didn't expect it, turning well, his back at 167%. He, also, he got stretched out. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, that, at look at this. this. He, got, he got, like, blurred. Ha <laughs> 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 ha dude. Oh, Pac-Man ain't to circle. Enhance, dude. Enhance. Oh, my goodness. It's a 3-0 victory, though, for Zamba. Moving on to winner's finals here at Xenosaga. And I don't know. It's it just, uh, you know, maybe they know what they're doing when it comes to seeding this tournament. That's a two-seed over yeah. the three-seed. I mean, okay, yeah, we're going to be heading back into losers. But Some bit of Minecraft. All right, and it looks like we're going to be getting into the game right here. How old is D-Dog? Looks Def young. He definitely looks very young. And one <laughs> exchange I do remember him from was when he was fighting HBox on Wi-Fi, and then uh, he, that's when HBox got DQ from like MSM or something. Uh, and D Dog's like, let's play it out anyway. <laughs> like D Dog definitely doesn't want those free Ws. He wants to work for his wins. But there we go. The crit forward smash. Very unlucky Speaking here. Of free double eight. use. <laughs> uh oh man, that's a uh, definitely brutal right there. You love to see the crit, man. That's a good RNG. Go buy a lottery ticket. Ooh. I like that combo, 53% onto VV, but I mean, we saw what happened to that stock. It just went away. And I mean, there was some RNG involved there. You know, Hero is one of the only characters in this game where RNG is a factor. Although Steve also has a little bit of RNG, right? Uh, some it, materials? Uh, I'd say it's stage dependent. It's pretty consistent though. Ooh. Okay. Oh, do not tech roll in right there. D-Dog gonna make it even stocks. And, oh, where are you going? Okay, oh, where oh. are you going? Yeah, one more for good measure. Oh, we're trying to get a low recovery, but instead, good recovery from Vivi to avoid that spike. Good job shielding oh, that, uh, that particular move. Has a wind box that will suck you in. Yeah, I definitely like the character choice a lot, mostly because, again, bounce is going to be something that's going to be a really good answer to the minecart. That being said, like, it seems that we're still seeing a lot of melee options from D-Dog. You know, just wants to use, for Steve's honestly, decent frame data to just duke it out. Oh. Yeah, even though bounce came into effect, it was actually still led him to an opening. Yeah, yeah, uh, still very fortunate luck of the draw right there. Just what they needed in the nick of time. And uh, this two stock to two scenario, man, this is looking kind of scary. Yeah, complete. Oh, diamonds are now uh, in effect. And there is no MP for Vivi. Yeah, yeah, Vivi has to kind of just play a little bit more patient right now. Now he has enough MP that probably, yeah, going in isn't as much of a risk. Yeah, that's definitely a big deal right there, the MP on a hero. But though, wow, perfect use of the MP to get that buff in the forward, so it's going to be enough. Wow, 
Oh yeah, this, is, this is definitely a great choice. Cause isn't Divi usually like the Pario? Uh, so apparently he's been playing a lot more. Uh, yeah, Komei. Yeah, the, more hero, but there are matchups. I think like Sonic, for instance, where he will, without question, go Lucario. Ooh, that almost did it right there. And once more bounces in effect, Magic uh, Burst, is that going to be it? No. Yeah, low but, mana Magic Burst, but amazing percent. This is such like a... Because it's... The fact that he's at zero MP means that D-Dog wants to be approaching, but BB knowing that, okay, right there actually, really good pick up at the down air, but he was doing a great job of walling him out once he did run out of MP. No. Is that dead? Well, KO screen off the minecart at zero? Minecart forward air at zero? This game, dude, it likes to make that mental damage or something. <laughs> Yeah, and this is, Steve has that built-in comeback mechanic. The fact that by the end of the game, usually, he does, in fact, have the diamond weapons. All this of a sudden, taking the lead. What oh, happened? Dude? He had no MP. <laughs> yeah, like, Vivi's kind of been playing fast and loose with his MP, so... I mean, it definitely, it's, you know, when it works, it works, but that is the risk that you might get hit when you can't afford to. That was a uh, quite a situation right there, man. I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah, the air dodge, I guess, and the MP. You're right. I think they thought they could make it with the air dodge distance, and that's going to be the game one going in D dog's yeah. favor. I think that Zoom would have cost too much MP. That even Zoom wouldn't have been it, right? Oh no, no, Zoom's kind of low maintenance. Like, but he had like only like nine, ten MP. I think that thing's going to be enough. Uh, yeah, well, he went to look for it. That was kind of what. Because there is more of a possibility that you, if you are like airborne, you can get Zoom more commonly. Okay, yeah, uh, that's what we got uh, telling us from production. The closer you are to the bio zone, raises your opportunities to get more, like, zoom better. Ooh, great job. This time around, D-Dog doing a much Ooh. better job. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, doing a much better job getting in on VB. VB trying to go for all these cheeky little down B moves, and oh, they're leaving oh. him wide open. Love this chase from D-Dog to apply the extra pressure. Not able to get any zoom out, and now in a bad situation, very low mana. Oh, I didn't get the forward smash. This is still wooden sword, so I don't even know whether that would have killed. But nonetheless, really healthy lead for D-Dog right now. Ooh. Yeah, trying to get that spike into the conversion. But no, that's not going to be it. The stock continues to be held onto. D-Dog now trapped at the corner. Been very consistently stuck there for the past minute, I'd say. BB. Kind of coming alive right here, especially with all of these buffs. With Accelerado, he's trying to get in, but D-Dog not really giving him huge opportunities. That being said, been doing a much better job of hiding those minecarts and that sort of thing. Yeah, both these players making this first stock actually last a very long time. To the point where, at some point, we might have to think about timeout. I mean, we're pretty far from it, but at the same time, uh, all right, going to be taking the stock right there. But if D-Dog wants to really slow it down, I mean, that might be a decent call, especially considering the fact that we had almost two minutes for that first stop. Yeah, we're seeing a good a level of respect from D-Dog, and then uh, the comeback that they made Ooh. before was kind of... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> was, that, was that actually Kamikaze, or was that Hocus Pocus? That was... Oh, I missed it. I guess we'll see uh, on the replays, because... They, they could have been going for a draw or just a misclick, but either way, D Dog is going to take them to the bank. I mean, yeah, that's that's a. St <laughs> <laughs> that was, a, that was a, just a crazy situation and not one that you want to do when you're in losers bracket and you're down a stock. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, <laughs> yeah, that. Whack and whack, always something you have to be scared of, even when you have a massive lead. That the <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! Enderman uh, getting knocked out of there, especially with the crit. See you later. I mean, without that crit, that wouldn't have killed. I don't think. <laughs> it's it's so so much luck right here from Vivi, but gonna need a little bit more if they want to take a game here because they're taking a lot of hits. Look at it, both these guys. Oh. They're starting to go back and forth, and this is the situation that d Dog wanted to be avoiding. He was up by quite a bit, especially after that Kamikaze. And even now, looking pretty solid, especially with Diamond Weapons.
the kill power, the threat is real. Ooh. Man, this game is just so full of surprises, man. We got Hero and Enderman here on PS2. And Enderman really close to going up 2-0. Yeah, and Vivi being pretty brave, just shielding right in D-Dog's face. Knowing that, you know, the grab oh, no, from... Oh, is that going to be it? Oh, wow, the air dodge actually went all the way through the magma block. No way, are you done? Oh, this misses! But the <gasps> no mana... That's the second time that low MP has really cost VB. And I mean, it's the sort of thing where it makes sense of, you know, he's trying to use his resources as much as he can. However, maybe, especially considering the fact that, like, you had time on your side to oh, slow things down. You see it right there, using the thwack just before the command grab activated. Yeah. And then the, the sound effect of the no more magic. Yeah, can we get a replay on that Kamikaze kill? <laughs> the dual kill. Yeah, let's see that menu right here. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Why? Good, uh, oh, man, just a bad draw. Why? I mean, he went up twice for it. Do you think he was maybe, that was a misinput? Uh, <laughs> it definitely is a reason why they're here down 2-0 now in loser's top eight now. Uh, it sucks, too, because, like, honestly speaking, it looked like Vivi was an advantage for both of those games, but just uh, a couple of misplays, misclicks, misinputs, whatever you want to call it, and uh, D-Dog's sitting 2-0 here. Oh, yeah. no. Ooh, big damage from that. But, oh! Uh, dash attack can't crit, can it? It's only the smash attacks? Smash attacks. Hatchet Man's always going to crit. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the smash attacks only. Yeah, and the sort of... Oh, that thwack. <laughs> Looking really scary. Just so menacing, man. Yeah, D-Dog, again, kind of playing a little bit behind, but uh, Vivi has to close out these stocks, and uh, Vivi, I think, is just wasting a lot of the MP as well. Yep. Kind of had to be predictable with his recovery right there, and D-Dog was ready for it. 125%, not really a place he can be too comfortable at, but also, Hero's neutral in general is kind of lackluster uh, until he gets, you know, the buffs on him. So... Yeah, just playing the neutral well might be able to give D, uh, D Dog a lot of extra damage. Yeah, yeah, this is a very long stock for D Dog. Playing very cozy right here, potentially gonna uh, get another stock here. Oh, what attack though. Oh, oh, but he has almost no MP. Oh. I love this chase from D Dog. <laughs> Finally gonna hit the mark with that. Now VB showing signs of life. I mean, that was, he was at very high percent. That was kind of almost to be expected. But once again, we have Vivi with almost no MP. He can't really be using any of his specials right now because he knows that if he gets hit once with those diamond weapons, he's going to be sent really far off stage and he needs to save at least a little bit for recovery. Yeah, just as you say, now setting this ledge trap, very little magic in general. With I love that option right there, getting back to center. Yes. We have a diamond in the back, so even when this diamond weapon expires, he's going to have access to another one. BB can't take any more hits. Yep, Fresh is it really smart. Oh, this is very scary. Yeah, and I mean, I like the fact that BB is slowing it down, partially, you know, to just make sure that he has MP to spare, because that's been a limiting factor for him. Oh, in some of the games, the set. Oh, What's the you're choice here? dead. I, I'm not sure. Um, he could have cycled for Hatchet Man. Uh, I think that would have been the play, honestly speaking. Definitely had a little bit more time than he thought. Oh, it's still gonna get that extra damage and the offstage edge guard. Amazing double fair with the Accelerado. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that that's his sleeping animation. There's so I'm honestly glad that Hero was added to the game because then we might be able to see more of the beautiful sleeping animations that you normally never do. In compare, oh. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, is this even Smash Bros anymore? I don't even know. <laughs> I want off Mr. Ender's wild ride. Oh my goodness, dude. And now, oh wow, get, use that up here. Just get out of the corner. And uh, Vivi has a real shot at getting a game on the board here. Okay, yeah, right, nice. Seeing as soon as balance expires, he's going to go back to using that minecart. Oh, a kaboom. 
That's huge. another kaboom. Uh, VB playing with a lot of control here. Oh, the shield's are so tiny. Oh, oh, catching the landing, though. Oh, what? that was... I, I love the idea behind it, but VV able to counterplay by instead landing right on the blocks. Yeah, yep. Yeah. playing a little bit of Minecraft right there. Going to stay a little bit safer with that extra footing that they have off of the stage. That heal, actually pretty big, considering the fact that, yeah, like these, these diamond weapons... No, really that's it. <gasps> oh, you didn't get the spike. Blood trap coming out, though. Oh no, you gotta get back up. What are you gonna do? You're submitting so much MP! Oh, but it works out to their advantage. Another glowing red here. Oh, bounce. bounce. Watch out. Looking this, for the up tilt. This also means that he can't. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That up tilt right there coming into play. Um, that also means he can't down air when bounce is in effect, right? Because the downer is considered to be a projectile? Yes, absolutely. That knock it right back up. So. Uh, I, that's a point on the board for Vivi, and we're getting uh, all these games are just last hit scenarios. And uh, so far, they've swung in the favor of D Dog. Unfortunately, D Dog not able to close that out with a 3 0. That's the kind of thing that you want to do is like you don't want to drop any games if you are going to close it out because now you're giving Vivi some momentum. <laughs> yeah. That was, he, it was his edge guard and then getting turned around on him. That's another thing that you, especially against a character like Hero, who has a really fast up B, you have to be careful about overextending off stage. Or, you know, any of the combos in general. Just the fact that, ooh, that fast move can turn that situation right around on you. Oh, wow. And you're gonna miss that magic right there. And uh, just keeping this whole set up here, it's huge. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised. Uh, I actually, a little more damage now would have been the stock. <laughs> he hasn't chosen Hocus Pocus once. Coward. Facts. Oh my god. Yeah, gets a good grab though. Into the conversion. Oh. Amazing use of Accelerado to get the bonus uh, mobility. <gasps> he only went for the first hit of uh, Forward Tilt. I'm not sure exactly why he didn't commit to the second. Oh, but the fact that, that he didn't means that D Dog with the stage control is going to be forging new weapons, but not reacting that time around. Or maybe he even got sucked off of the uh, the little block he was on top of. That almost killed him. Oh, yeah. That was very close to taking the stock. And now what do we got here? Two stocks to two. I'm oh, sorry, three stocks to two. Of Eevee playing with a lot more control as they have been seemingly for most of this, but this, it's been D Dog clutching it out most of the time. Mm -hmm. So we do have the... Okay, no, he's reforming. I think that's steel weapons now. <laughs> oh, watch out, though. Uh, I like how he didn't even mess around with that, you know, the, the, the neutral beat coming out of him. It's like when your mom is like, just don't look at it. Just keep on walking. Yeah, D-Dog's been doing a really good job of uh, actually just getting the control. No way. What? 7% underneath the platform. That is huge. And Vivi potentially going to bring this to a game five. Potentially, yeah, that's definitely looking like the case right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. D Dog, really eager for this kill, needs to make it happen immediately. Yeah, Still high, high amount of like uh, RNG luck so far in this entire set. Two crits, two thwacks, and uh, I don't know, man, v all the luck is on VV's side today. Dog, nice job. Yeah, that's one thing that the minecart does. You know, it, it, yes, it can function as a, you know, it functions as a projectile and can get reflected by bounce. At the same time, we also have seen D Dog just use it as a movement option to uh, get in nonetheless. And how is he still alive? He's at 181%, got smacked in the face with diamond weapons, and Vivi doesn't even care. Yeah, no care in the world, but, uh, oh, wow, he has to be a stock on top finally. D Dog, though. It needs to uh, do a lot of work if they want to just close up the set. Oh, Diamond's going to help, though. 55%, just like that. Real quick combo. That's possibly the beginning of a comeback. And wow! <gasps> the forward smash, that black just barely missing. And now this might be the beginning. 89% on D-Dog, but VV have already taken... <gasps> 48 off stage. So dangerously close. That's going to be it. Wow. What a comeback factor from D-Dog. Uh, getting the 3-1 and eliminating. 
Oh my god. The hero right there. And that, but he won. I was so convinced we were going to see a game five right there. I was so, so convinced. But How? D Dog just keeping himself in it. Two forward smashes with the diamond, what, diamond weapons. This yeah, was the BB. last one right there. And you notice <laughs> the way he placed his blocks, created this little staircase, preventing him from really going to ledge. I think maybe it was possible that he could have gone, recovered really low. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, gone so down and, like, almost Squeeze stalled as much as he could. Mm -hmm. uh, but just kind of baited him into going high right there. And that's going to be D-Dog, who I really hadn't known much about him before tonight. But he's just doing a fantastic job. Really great results. He's kept himself alive. He's in guaranteed fifth place, right? He's in loser's yep, quarters. Top six now, finally. And then uh, outside of this tournament, I heard he's picked up wins like on Jackal and other amazing Tri-State players. So uh, D-Dog on the come up. Again, the first time I heard of them was a crazy MSM DQ situation uh, involving Hungrybox. But uh, yeah, a lot, there might be some H-Boxers in the chat. Yeah, remember that moment. So D-Dog making a name for himself here in Tri-State, which is, again, a really hard region to make a name for yourself in. Uh, I think just like that, we're going to be moving on into the actual match match here. Yep, winner semis. Uh, so Tilda favored to win, but I definitely think numbers could do this. Yeah, uh, numbers can actually do it. I definitely agree with you, especially again, getting a hot second place finish already, getting warmed up for the big event, but wow, that's a amazing string, an amazing DI from numbers just to stay alive, and this is still Falco off stage. Really good chance here for numbers to turn this around. Yeah, and is he dead? Oh, oh man. The, okay, the blast zone's on a... Uh, <laughs> oh, that was so ugly. <laughs> what a down it's, it's one of those things where, like, it makes sense when you think about it, how why physically that happens, but it just looks so gross and ugly, and I will never understand it. Yeah, that's the kind of hit that hits you. It should take two stocks off of the board. That looks brutal. I mean, I don't even know if Tilda needs two stocks taken off of numbers because I was confident numbers was going to be able to do it, but... No, this is looking really bad for him at the moment. He hasn't even touched Tilda since he respawned. Finally gets that first hit in, but it's just... Uh, I, Tilda is just... His combos, his spacing in neutral, everything is just looking so good right now. That's a death! Yeah, oh wow, three stocks to one right here again. Tilda uh, winning the last three weeks for good reason, man. This guy is an absolute beast. Look at this. <gasps> Woo! -hoo. Look, the creative pressure he pulls off just to... Yeah. He took so much damage. Yeah, that sun beat going back in your face. And uh, we actually saw numbers kind of go ham on Dill on this very stage in the winner's quarters set. Uh, he's just going kind of crazy on Town and City, so he must be very comfortable here. Yeah, but there are certain advantages that uh, Fox does have. The fact that... Oh, okay. I mean, I don't even have a chance to talk about it. I didn't even KO screen right there. I think she could have jumped in up beat, but... Uh, um, I think he didn't have a jump. Oh, it must have caught it right, right out of the jump. Uh, Let's take get a, a replay here. on this. I think he got his jump snatched from him. Yeah, I, I would believe it. Like, leave it. It's kind of like... Yeah, so... Plays with fire a lot of the time at the ledge, you know? Yeah. I think he Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yep, that was it. Uh, Does the kill screen take into account whether you've jumped or not? No, the thing is... Okay, so... Uh, it's not going to take that into account yeah. because if he did have his jump, he's making it back, so... Uh, unfortunate stuff for numbers, but uh, that's going to be uh, an amazing three stocks to start game one, man. Tilde is just poised for another like hot victory, and Zomb is waiting for the winner. And I think it's worth noting, numbers is, you know, he's notorious, very well known for his ledge play. Specifically, the putting himself on the ledge willingly, but two of those stocks at least came from the ledge between the back air, and as you saw right there, the actual down air to take oh. it. At the ledge, numbers is not safe. Tilde is the one in control, and I don't even no, he's still willingly putting him there, but oh, I don't know at what cost. At what point does numbers fear the ledge? Yeah, trying to get that ledge trap and not going to get too much off of it, but uh, really good answer with the get up attack. Numbers, though, is on notice. Oh, I like that bait. I think he was trying to bait numbers into going for a ledge jump, but he did not actually fall for it. And now numbers with some stage control, but. I think he wanted to go for a side B or something like that, hoping for an air dodge. But no, Tilde knows that he can be aggressive right now. And this aggression is just working out fantastically. The pressure from in front, behind, still catching numbers. That up smash putting Tilde with a huge lead right here.
Yeah, yeah, amazing lead, and we saw how dominant he was in game one. He just kind of tried to pick up this momentum and try to meet Zamba again for a rematch of Wednesday. All right, that number is getting the deep breathing. I think that's very important. He needs to be figuring out how he's going to get this kill, and oh, I think he was expecting Tilda to jump, but no, Tilda with the roll behind. He's staying, like, the, the fact that he is being very aerial, but not when Numbers is expecting. Numbers has anti-air options, but he's not landing them against Tilde. No, yeah, not landing that at all. And now we're in a very scary spot here. Numbers, man, he just can't get in. All right, finally gets a bit of an opening, but he didn't have deep breathing, so there was no way that forward to forward throw was going to actually take it. He's still looking, still trying to find it. Definitely, I think forward tilt is usually the option that we see numbers go for. And, oh, no invincibility. Yeah, he, I like that idea from Tilde where he went to try and actually challenge numbers off stage, knowing that numbers could just punish him for having no invincibility. But numbers anticipated it. I think just reacted with that side B. Oh, yeah, and here he is Tilde once again taking a stock with the up smash. Very comfortable and confident with the lead. That's yeah, the second up smash kill we've seen also. If, it, you know, Numbers not dying at the ledge anymore, it doesn't matter, though. Tilda has options, all sorts of ways to put on the hurt. Oh, here we go. The combo started coming out, and now you're in the cutscene <laughs> animation, the one-player game. I will say that actually when it comes to Falco's combos, it's more of a mini game of you try to smash DI, you try to DI, try to mix him up. Because, I mean, there's no, you're probably still getting hit by something, but you can at least try to make it a lot harder for him to get those really big combos. Yeah, but it's, it's seeming like nobody in Tristar, at least nobody in the Xeno tournament, is having an answer to this bird, man. I don't know what is going on, but uh, he just knows the right combos, knows the right advantage, and uh, looking like he's going to go up 2 0 right now. Oh, but Numbers looking pretty decent. Oh. I'm surprised he lived that. Can Numbers actually close the deal, though? Oh. He held down just slightly, putting him past the ledge and giving him, alleviating that pressure. Oh, Tilde alive at 139. Ooh, well, the header, not enough, and now he's got a re-grab. Yeah. 2-0 advantage here for Tilde here in winter semis. Yeah, and numbers. You saw he even tried to go for that swiggly little recovery. You know, WeFit has a lot of room to just like just wiggle back and forth as she's hula hooping. But kind of just recognizing that he could hold that down smash. Numbers can hold the L. Yeah, yeah numbers just getting way too greedy right there, I think. Yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of options right there. Goodbye, that charge and hands off the ledge. You are done. You are down to a... Yeah, Numbers going to be sticking with the Wii Fit. It does feel like, I mean, there's always the potential that Numbers can blow him up. We haven't really seen it, but deep breathing Wii Fit is, uh, it's gross. No, I agree with you, man. This is uh, looking very scary. It's like once you, the Wii Fit trainer is, has the deep breathing, it's just basically like a big game of keep away. Uh, and uh, either way, Tilde just doesn't seem to be in any like like scared positions, not really getting any panic options, just going for that first stock and snowballing the lead in his favor. Yeah, but I do like the fact he does kind of slow it down once he... Uh Oh, okay. He does slow it down once he sees the deep breathing is in effect. Not necessarily running away, but not Ooh. being as aggressive as he may be. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> that combo was beautiful. Yeah, that was such a clean string coming out for the bird. Oh, numbers. I think he actually went for an A landing there to avoid the tech chase. It doesn't matter. Tilde able to chase him down regardless. And that's going to be a back air to take the sock. Numbers needs to find a way to even things up here without getting put through the grinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is a, uh, wow. Almost going to get the edge guard scenario, man. Numbers just doesn't have an answer to this bird. And this is similar to game one where Numbers felt like he was being trapped at the ledge. And, oh, just barely getting clipped by that up B. Everyone thinks that up B is so punishable, yet Tilde able to just, between the angles and the timing, and, oh, why would you, in his face? Okay. Oh, my goodness, man. This is looking terrifying. And catching that roll on the stage. Bad roll, John Numbers. That's going to put you one stock to three. And, I don't know, going to try to get the deep breathing, try to make something happen with the stock. I mean... 
Okay, there goes down the first stock, but numbers is <laughs> he is really struggling right now. And it's this is not like a round one, you know. John Numbers, one of the best players out here in New York for honestly almost a decade, and. He's kind of just getting mixed right now. Tilde, his dominance is being solidified right here, right now, as Number struggles to get anything started, and he is in complete control. Yeah, man, we've a trainer known for going to ledge pretty often, but even for those standards, has been seen a lot more frequently. Now Number's putting himself in a disadvantage right now. Woohoo! Wow, the damage coming out from Tilde. Numbers once again trapped at the ledge, willingly putting himself there. Oh, but we see the down airs. Tilda looking for maybe a down air to down air. Just end this set. Oh, there's down air one. Oh, Great well. combo break. Just enough DI right there. Wow, the chase with the tech is amazing from Tilde. No. Just, oh. Yeah. I thought it was, could he have air dodged maybe? I don't know. That seemed like it was real close. Did he run out of deep breathing right there? Or was he still, did he still have deep breathing in effect? I think he just mixed them up just in general and they got the sweetest hit that back air right at the edge. Yeah, Tilde was very happy with that pop off, dude. Look at that. Winners of finals here, that up throw in the back air. I think he's just like, the, I, I think he's just excited to hit that, man. That percent, that was so early. And uh, yeah, look how cozy you had that pop off. And there's the numbers losing a uh, fist bump. We we know it well. Let's get, like, can we get a replay on that? Come on. We, we need to appreciate them. <laughs> uh, they're somehow all the same, yeah. yet they Ooh. still are unique. And here it is, Tilde pop off right here. That's 70% like, back yeah, that's, air. That's a good pop off. Like, Enhanced. I'd rate that pop off as like a solid uh, 8 out of 10. Numbers is just like, Boom. yeah, there it is. <laughs> that, that, that's going in the credits later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, we should. Can somebody make a uh, like a compilation of every numbers lost fist bump and then just wrap it in fire? <laughs> Create a little compilation, you know what I mean? Maybe set. What kind of music would that be set to? <laughs> it doesn't even matter. I don't. I don't know why that one in particular, but just like fi noodle fist bumps to to whatever band that was. Green Day was that Green Day? Anyway, I think these guys aren't waiting around, man. These. Yeah. So. I'm actually really, I think, did these two play? Was this, that's right. So let me just tell you a little bit of history. These two have played before. Oh, oh And it was in round five. one because at the time, like, House didn't know the, you know, that D-Dog was this good. And it was like game three, super deep, duper last hit. Like, Sinji actually had to make a comeback with only like 30 seconds on the clock or something like that. Uh, and it seems like that D-Dog has only got better in this matchup. I mean, look at that. 118 damage with only six on his body. This is kind of nuts right now. Yeah, I think D-Dog needed to close that stock. Now Sinji's chance is here to close that deficit. And Sinji's was, uh, Sinji, again, was the person to put D-Dog in the losers. Oh, really? They played earlier today? Right. Ah. Uh, it was on screen, too. So uh, shout out to D-Dog, just making it here for the run, run back. Oh, that's going to be nice job from Sinji. And this is one of those things where Pac-Man matchup knowledge, uh, knowing to look out for what kill option he's looking for and how to avoid it. Whoop, that was such a cute little bait. Don't watch out. What a spike right there. Yeah, turning it all the way around. But that's what I was talking about when it came down to the first stock. It's like, as much as, as, as important as it is to get that 100%, uh, it's not a give up percent, it's a give up about stocks. And Sinji made it count. Oh, watch out, though. Speaking of percent. Oh, these combos are just so consistent. No, so good. no, no way, dude. Almost did it off the side with a diamond forward smash. Oh, the shield pressure, dude. <laughs> His shield is so tiny. Oh, look at it. It's gone. That was so smart. Going for the Tanner because even if Sinji angled his shield, it would have popped. So that was like, that was just checkmate. Yeah, he would have needed the parry or a perfect, like, panic option, like, spot dodge or roll at the right time. Even then, I don't know. He just put himself in a very big threat. Oh, I like that forward smash. Sinji, you know, he is still oh. in this. Is that enough to do it? Wow. Now... This is a matchup where very easily it could go to timeout, 
But we are not seeing that at all in this game. We have like four and a half minutes on the clock. These two are going to have to duke it out pretty much to the end. Yeah, these two specifically uh, definitely got it in them to get there. Uh, like these characters, but this game is definitely not going to get there. <laughs> yeah, Steve has those low percent combos, but so does Sinji. And uh, one thing that I know Sinji actually likes about this matchup is the fact that it is very easy for him to re-grab uh, the fruit because he just throws it against those blocks that Steve is just building naturally in the game. Oh, watch out. Oh, oh, the chase. Almost caught him with the dead DI there, too. Man, this is crazy. Like, this game is so fast-paced. Oh, that's such a brave parry. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Yeah, Sinji not prepared or expecting the down air. And it comes from above like a cartoon character. Drop the anvil on his head. Yeah, Steve's such a goofy character. We get to see that play happen a lot. So, uh, D Dog going up 1 0 in this run back. <laughs> yeah, but I, have, I feel like there isn't. There isn't really a thread to follow of who is commanding the lead right now. You know, both of them have their advantages, and as we, we have the honestly the pleasure of this being a three out of five set, so we will definitely see adaptation happening from both of them. Yeah, Ooh. A good damage right here. <laughs> damage still, but uh, not enough to KO, not enough knockback on that fair to make it happen. But it doesn't. Cindy doesn't really need that. He's still getting all of this damage. All right, finally, actually choosing to retreat, wants to refresh his items, was not confident his ability to continue that ledge trap, and I mean, I can definitely see it. Now he has Bell in hand, he might even be able to get a kill very soon. Yeah, it was very good with that Bell in the first game, and uh, definitely a part of his success to this point, but let's see what he can do. Just trying to trap Enderman, but not able to get anything, but still, it's crazy, it's been almost a minute, and Enderman hasn't done a percent at all. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there comes the first hit, and oh, we might have a lot more after that. 51%. Oh. <gasps> I love that. He hurtbox shifted oh. by going for neutral air to avoid the hydrant coming right at him. Yeah, the trampoline kind of breaking right there. Stingy almost getting caught right there with the anvil. Five. And I think that this is the sort of thing where D Dog might not have the most experience in this matchup just based on how many times he's getting hit by that bell. Uh, when you see a lot of New York City players who play against Sinji every single week, they still get hit by bell, but you know, they're definitely looking and watching out for it. So D Dog has to become one of, you know, channel all of those people and figure out how to avoid getting hit by the bell because, I mean, you see just how easily and quickly it can delete a stock. Oh, I, I guess trying to get a little bit cheeky there because they're getting a little desperate to close the stock. Sinji playing with a lot more control this game. Just as I say that, though, the combo is real, and D Dog takes that stock early. That was really. I, what, that, I've never seen that particular kill setup from Steve. But fantastic from him. But he's still at 69%. Sinji managing to get a nice amount of damage okay. onto him. I see the anvil come out. I'm just, I'm just sorry, the, the hydrant come out. Like, he, I bet he wishes it was an anvil because I think K was so early. With percent now down to even. Look at this. A D Dog, though. <gasps> oh, going super deep off stage right there. Yeah, this is the thing where in this matchup, it feels like as soon as D Dog gets in, especially at the lower percents, he just racks up so much damage so quickly. Oh, no weapons in hand. All right, here comes the ledge yeah. trap. Gonna get off the ledge with a good jump, though. No, let's hit it again. Oh, the bomb! Oh. The dynamite didn't save them. Oh, I get that. The, the TNT, I think. Yep. Sent them in the opposite direction. Oh, the brave parries once more. All right, and good job. Gets his diamond weapons back. That means that now Sinji has to be a lot more scared. At the same time, I think maybe we'll be seeing Key. Uh, no, we're still seeing no the bell. No way, <laughs> dude. And he was stuck there still for a while. Up smash is going to do it. I don't even think that was disrespect. I think that was just Sinji trying to cover as many options as possible. This guy's a lab monster, and he probably specifically went for the bell into forward air just to, you know, if it had missed, it still would catch him if he was jumping. Uh, I definitely agree with you that uh, specifically. Now, Sinji with an opportunity here to make this one game to one here. In win oh, sorry, this is loser's top six. So whoever loses the set will be eliminated. Oh, 
diamonds are back in Steve's inventory. So oh, even if Sinji or even if that diamond weapon breaks, it's pretty much it, you could expect it to be a resource available for the rest of the game here. If you're Sinji, that's, a, you know, the fear has to be in you. Oh, but he still goes for those brave options like the crab. Leads to some decent damage to the lower percents. Yeah, this is looking kind of scary. <gasps> Sinji, now this is the sort of situation he thrives in. That was so smart. He used the water to push him, make him faster. And Sinji definitely wasn't expecting it. Oh, I like the option going for the down air. This might possibly be the stock. With D-Dog trapped in the corner like this, it is. Bell to up smash and another one for the books. Sinji's going to be evening things up 1-1. One, one. I legit think that's every stock Sinji's taken this set. The two in the first game, the three in the second game. Bell to up smash is so reliable here because I think he's just cutting off the option. See, let's look at it right here. Uh, this is the, the last stock. I think it's he the third again. It. Yeah. It was the fact he re-grabbed it. And, yeah. Look at that. So I I feel like, yes, he's getting Bell to up smash very consistently, but they're always from a different situation. It's not like he's falling into the same trap over and over again. It's just that Bell is such a flexible tool, or rather, since he makes it such a flexible tool that, you know, having to play around it means having to play around it at almost every instance. Yeah, because if you're going to hit that five times, it's just like the level of patience. Because like, he's holding the fruit for a long time sometimes. Like, sometimes. It's very much like almost like a conditioning tool where it's just like, when am I going to do it? Oh, oh big damage. I will say, it feels like both these characters are kind of playing their own game plan. But... When Sinji's game plan is uninterrupted, it's just so scary. And a lot of the people who have very good success against him, that's what they do. They prevent him from playing the way he wants to be playing. He dog has to figure out how to do that, how to put on more pressure, and just play around these very versatile fruits just a little bit more. Yeah, both of them kind of just charging up a little bit, man. You, Steve getting the resources, and then now we have uh, the fruit in hand. Uh, well, we see a six stock taken with this bell. <gasps> oh, still has bell in hand. I like that going for... I mean, actually, I wonder if he just thought the bell was going to hit. <gasps> that was so much damage. That kill in the blink of an eye. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing KO option right there. Oh, wow, watch out. Gonna get the bell yet again, but uh, D-Dog hanging on for dear life. And we do have the key. Yep. Uh, that's an option that we haven't really seen uh, come into play, mainly because it felt like Sinji was getting the stocks earlier before key was really relevant. And it's the sort of option that when the opponent is looking for it, you know, I think that Sinji once broke down the frame data for me. It's about frame 20 uh, if it's not in his hand. So that's the sort of thing that a lot of people can react to, especially if it's all the way across the stage. But if you're not expecting it, if you're not looking out for it, then yeah, that's the sort of thing that can take us stock for free. Yeah, the keys we've been seeing today have been missing, and uh, it hasn't been working at all up until this point. So uh, either way, D-Dog making it even stocks, and uh, yeah, just keeping it respectable, keeping it close, keeping Sinji like, kind of guessing, you know? All right, and this match, this one's a lot slower than the ones we've seen previously, already about two and a half minutes down. And <laughs> these guys are at a very healthy two stocks. Yeah, yeah, very early, very healthy. They are slowing down the pace of this game. They recognize this is loser's bracket. Uh, I don't want to overextend when I don't have to. Yeah, and also it feels like Sinji's evasion is a lot more on point than it used to be. He was getting caught by things, you know, the up tilts, the forward airs, and now he's just avoiding them so expertly. Yeah, that's a really good observation. Yeah, we're seeing a lot less combo starters coming out from Steve because, like, he gets so much mileage the moment he can't find that up tilt or that up air, you know? Oh, man, look at this. Sinji just playing around, exactly being where he needs to be to avoid every option that D-Dog is trying to throw his way. <gasps> there was actually the first instance of a hit that we've had in probably about Ooh! a minute, but wow. that was gorgeous. Yeah, breaking that hydrant and then getting that forward air to combo into it. That's Enderman off the top at 160. What a beautiful combo.
Okay, even more big damage here, possibly. Sinji trying to get the Galaxian at these lower percents, but now D-Dog playing around it a little better. But the fact that he lost that... Oh, that was a beautiful parry! Yeah. The opening that was created because of that parry managed to get Sinji even more extra damage. And not only that, the statement that it makes... No <laughs> way. Yeah, it's the extra credit is amazing coming out here for Sinji. We're kind of seeing shades of their winner's set where Sinji was able to uh, put D-Dog in the losers. And now Sinji just working on his double elimination. Oh. That being said, uh, this is best three out of five sets. So even if Sinji closes this out, oh, neat. Um, even if he closes this out, D-Dog has another game to sort of think about what went wrong this time around. And, all oh right, starting to use more of the minecart. Uh, I felt like he wasn't going for that quite as much because Sinji was sort of, you know, punishing him with the bell and that sort of thing. But then once he wasn't using the minecart, then Sinji was able to uh, sort of run away and do exactly what he wanted to for free. No, I don't think he was out. Gonna get caught there at the top, though. <laughs> and both of these, like, uh, I was just gonna talk about, like, maybe they can go to a different stage, but both of them have been making amazing usage of Pokemon Stadium with Sinji having all the time in the world to just regenerate the fruit. And now we, we're literally seeing Steve right now just literally just getting more resources. But at the same time, look at the top, look at the clock. A hundred, oh, sorry, one minute and 50 seconds. Sinji bringing oh. it down here uh, to, you know, this is gonna be one stock a piece. And we're probably not going to see a timeout, but the thing is, after a certain point, the timeout threat might come into play. Just having to, you know, that sort of panic of, oh man, I need to make something happen right now. Is that going to be it though? Yeah, no, we're nowhere close to even timeout because Sinji finds the hits he needs to, and that's another bell leading into a kill. That definitely was the closest that we've gotten though. As the set continues to draw like on further and further, both of them are just trying to like set a new pace and Sinji just the better one at doing it and making it happen. Yeah, what I think one of the things that D-Dog needs to do is, it's really hard to say this, but use Minecart in a way that still allows him to chase down Sinji without him getting caught unawares by the bell, by the fruit. Because yes, he has been dying to it, but when he's not carting at all, then Sinji's just running away and being able to play exactly how he wants to. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. So I guess you just gotta be like playing it perfectly and figure out exactly when you can be carting to uh, open, you know, Sinji up. <gasps> Yeah, I think Sinji's just really making these adaptations. Like, sometimes you'll lose game one to Steve, and it's just like, all right, I know I, I got hit by I know what I'm going to do to avoid it. And then Sinji just kind of showing why he sent D-Dog to losers earlier in the bracket. Watch out, though. Here we go. Ooh, but the thing is, we are in best three out of five territory. And it seems like D-Dog has been adjusting quite well. He has a lead here, and I love that from Sinji, recognizing that he wasn't going to be able to kill with the up smash and wants to keep it fresh. Yep, and then uh, not enough freeze right there on that timing from the bell, but now trying to find a ledge trap, trying to close the stock, but uh, D-Dog evading it very well. All right, we just heard the diamond clink. D-Dog, once he has some room, he can perhaps craft those items, which could be really important. Since you get 90%, he would be, he'll have to be very scared of diamond weapons. Gold one's not quite as much. Ooh, I love that weight. No, it doesn't matter anyway. D-Dog taking stock one here in game four. And taking that stock is huge. When Sin whenever Sinji manages to get the stock lead, it can be one of the most frustrating things for any human being to deal with. Having to, you know, approach Sinji in a way where he knows you have to approach him, uh, it's, it's like he always has a game plan for you. Oh, wow, yeah. Sinji just desperate to close his stock. The Apple should be able to do it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, amazing aim right there, man. Uh, his usage of the fruit this entire set has been so expert. <gasps> oh, that Galaxian just hitting, just nicking D-Dog. But it wasn't quite the hitbox Sinji was expecting, and that meant that Sinji wasn't able to get the big combo off of it that we sometimes see from him. But then, nonetheless, 74% onto Sinji. <gasps> oh, with diamond weapons available, that up smash almost taking it. D-Dog looking like he might actually go up two stocks to one if Sinji isn't careful here. Ooh. <laughs> Not going to take the stock, but definitely closing the gap with that amazing combo from Sinji. And now Bell is once more in hand, which means it's threatening the kill. 
All right, I like the fact that he's being up very high so that even if he does get hit by that bell, it isn't a, uh, a stock loss. But Sinji's still able to effectively play around. Beautiful job at that. It's the mine card. It's actually coming in to play and helping him out right there. So, oh, oh but we have last stock between these two. So many resources, though, here from d -Dog. Immediately getting the diamond tools and now all this iron online. But yeah, as much iron as he has, he's still... Uh, no, no, no way, dude. He stole that set underneath d Dog, dude. 3-1. Sinji advancing the top four. He carried him all the way out there. Oh, we need to see that again. You know we do. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. 0% Yeah, that was a zero to death. Sinji, the only damage he took was the damage oh, from inside fair. the magnifying glass fair. while he was ex fair. Ex fair. And there it is, the final committal fair. Yeah, and I think that's because he was probably... I think that worked because he was DIing in. Because you're like, ah, I'm getting pushed off the stage. Ah, I, want, I don't want to be so far out there. But DIing in, Shinji just like chasing him down, able to connect one forward air into another, riding the fair plane all the way into the blast zone. Yeah, yeah that's one player stepping in the top four, and then there's one more set left before we dip into the full top four. John Numbers versus Suarez, the winner of that will be in a half that they played, I think. Uh, but yeah, still nonetheless, against Suarez specifically, Suarez's style of play, you know, he's a lot more of a ledge trap heavy Yoshi. And ledge trapping Wii Fit, John Numbers Wii Fit in particular. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the most I can say about it. Yeah, yeah, Suarez was just going kind of ham uh, on a Wednesday. I think just Suarez just had a really good day because you said it yourself. Numbers so usually confident in the matchup, but sometimes, you know, Suarez ha has a good day. Sometimes he makes it happen. But John Numbers playing with the confidence that you were talking about before right now. 83% already on Suarez. Yeah. Ooh. And one thing that John likes to do is go for anti-air options. Uh, he always thinks about, okay, how am I going to... Armor's broken. Okay. Um, uh, you know, he loves that up tilt in which the hand oh. is intangible. And oh, closing out the stock with an up smash like that. And gives him the time to get deep breathing in effect as well. If uh, Suarez gets nicked by like a neutral or something like that, oof, he can take like 60% easily. Oh. oh, wow, that is actually brutal right there. And I was talking about how, oh, you know, it's so hard to ledge trap we fit and all that. But <laughs> the reward for doing so, as we see right there, now Suarez able to even up the stock count. Doing all right for himself. I actually like that phantom footstool, trying to give him as much space between him and numbers as possible. And, oh, my goodness, dude. Numbers with the confidence that you were talking about, man. These up smashes just going one after another. And uh, I, I don't know what it is. He's just playing so well. I mean, a big part of it is that every time Yoshi takes into the air, Numbers has a plan. It's either an up tilt or an up smash or even just the sun salutation. It's a, an amazing anti-air option. Comes out so quickly, able to do so much damage, and it kills. Oh, wow, the shield is so low, man. We can test to see a shield break, but now Suarez aware of it. Now it looks like we pick going to the ledge right now. Ooh, man, that is actually scary right here. Suarez trying to claw his way back into this. Wow, amazing shield. And now, well, not able to get too much off that tech situation. I think he could have got a forward tilt, but no. Oh, we're chasing him off stage, oh. though. That actually could have been the stock right there. If he had gone in deep and perhaps going for a neutral air, that might have killed numbers. They were deep in the blast zone. Oh, this armor from no Yoshi, jump. dude. Taking so many hits. 188. Is that it? Wow! Able to survive despite every hardship that Numbers is levying at him. But right there, Numbers able to take it with that F tilt. It's such a reliable move. And we probably that was probably Suarez jumping out of shield. Otherwise, he most likely would have gotten a parry. Uh, so a nice jump call out from Don Numbers. Yeah, we're seeing this adaptation from Suarez in real time, though. Able to live for a very long time and on that second stock. We got Numbers having to close this gap right now. Yeah, and we have, you know, Suarez, he's throwing out his double jump pretty early on, and Numbers is not able to actually chase him down and exploit the fact that he has no jump when landing. It was his yeah. aerial mobility, just too good. Uh, here's the light trap once more from Suarez into parry, but not going to get anything off of it. The re quick retraction from Wii Fit Trainer, man, it's like, I don't know, that, that, that get up attack hitbox is kind of scary. <laughs> What? There's been throwing out so many moves in each other's faces. Finally, Numbers manages to get a hit. But that was just... 
No, it's just Whip City. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Oh, the combos are coming into play. Oh, my God. This is so even. And this is just game one. Oh, but deep breathing now. Suarez just have to be careful. <gasps> Numbers going for an unsafe back air. Yoshi's aerial mobility letting him actually punish it. Yeah, that whiff right there, point blank, is going to be it uh, no for okay. stage control. Yeah, so whenever you see Yoshi get hit by like a strong move and go nowhere, that means his double jump armor had been uh, broken. Oh, Ooh. almost going to get that, what he got in the first stock. Now we have numbers. You know, up until this point, Numbers has always had the percent lead, and then Suarez just survives and turns it around on him. This time, though, Numbers is the one with the stock lead. He breaks his jump armor once again. Yeah, Suarez looking for a back air, something like that. No. And he throws at the egg. I think he wanted to grab the ledge with it, but he threw it out just a little bit too high. And the elevation from the egg throw itself put him onto the stage. There was nothing he could do. Just had to eat that sun. Yeah, that's a lot of momentum going in the favor of John Numbers as he goes up 1-0 in the set. Immediately, you can see the stages that he's getting rid of right now. The FD and uh, Kalos off the map. But you can see maybe Town and City. No, we're going to stick to small battlefield. Suarez just trying to, like, I guess close the distance right there because it is a bit, a bit of a smaller stage. I think the other thing is that we've seen a lot from Suarez. Um, the forward air confirms. You know, like against his set. Frozen. Went for forward air up smash. That's something that works a lot more reliably on a smaller stage like uh, like small battlefield. And, you know, forward air, up air, just being able to kill off the top, having that available to him as a, a reliable resource. I think that's what he's one of the things he's looking for here in this game. Oh, yeah, I agree with you, man. This is looking kind of scary. Uh, and, like, I, 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 that's, that's just how, what it is to fight a confident John Numbers. Like, uh, Suarez was clawing his way back, but it really came out of that last hit scenario and John Numbers just like, again, cracked the egg and made it happen. All right, Numbers hanging out at the ledge and finally finds the time to get deep breathing, but oh, I think he wanted to actually use it a bit and just, I think he made it a little bit too slow, was trying to mix up his timing, but that meant that he actually couldn't get all the way to the ledge. Numbers losing that stock like that is going to be really tough for him now to climb his way back. Suarez can definitely play to a lead. And, oh, oh, oh no invincibility. No, the re grab won't get punished, though. And now, uh, John Number's trying to regain control. Here we go. Also, I like the fact that right now, Suarez going for very consistent damage, not trying to go for these, like, you know, bigger reads. Yeah, this is Ooh. scary. 125% though. You know, despite the fact that Suarez is in the lead right now, does, oh, maybe I spoke way too soon. I was gonna say, it felt like Numbers has a very decent game plan that, you know, he died very early, but for the most part, he seems to be, you know, doing all right for himself. That being said, now all of a sudden his, what looked like wasn't much of a lead, 112% on Numbers. <laughs> That's a lot. Oh, and that's a three stock to one deficit. Numbers has to do a lot of work here to close the gap. But Yoshi is so good at staying alive. Woo! The parry, the bravery from that, but still a lot. That's huge damage getting racked up. Oh. It's going down there. Oh, Numbers. I guess just for whatever reason, <laughs> missed his chance. Yeah, I think he's just ready for this 1 1 scenario just to go back to a counter pick stage. Yeah, um, okay, we have the bans now. It's actually, both of them are banning like flat stages, uh, yeah. Kalos. Yeah, interesting. Um, <laughs> All right, they nah. kind of don't want to go to the same stages. Like. The thing is, you still don't want to risk if your opponent is just mind gaming you into wanting you to not ban it so that they can kind of pick you. It's... <laughs> Uh, I, I, we're sticking to the bioplats here, man. PS2 to small battlefield. Back to PS2. Ooh. Oh, good job from numbers. It's gonna end. Oh, oh no he's way! Dead. Amazing stock once more from Suarez. That's exactly what you need to snowball this set in your favor. How's he getting these early stocks, man? Suarez is coming alive. Yeah, I mean, we were talking earlier about how oh, numbers so comfortable, so good at the ledge. But when that strategy 
ends up really being exploited. When it falls apart, it falls apart hard because he is still willingly putting himself all the way out there, you know, right above the, uh, the, the, the abyss. And Suarez taking advantage of it, doing a really good job just messing him up right now. Yeah, that's, that's a large look at the uh, limitations that We Fit Trainer kind of has where a lot of them are often going to the ledge. But I do think that, like, when John is on stage holding control and sharking, he, like, uh, I don't know, he just plays the character in just, like, a way that I think has to be played when you're fighting against Yoshi. <laughs> All right, here we go. Watch out. Okay, I like the idea of going for the F tilt right there, um, but numbers got out and air dodge, able to actually turn that situation around. Deep breathing now in effect. There are so many moves that you have to be careful about as Yoshi here. Down tilt actually now, I believe recently was buffed and it's a kill move now from Wii Fit. Three stocks to one, yet again. I actually don't know how anybody can just try to make it back from this deficit, but uh, numbers is in a position where he just has to. This is loser's bracket. He does have one more game to work with at least because, you know, this is the best three out of five here for top eight. But, <laughs> don't, I mean, maybe try and gain whatever information you can. I know he normally likes this matchup. He's been very positive on Suarez for a long time. So what is happening? What is changing? What, ad what adjustments does he need to make? Right now, Suarez, knowing he has the lead, playing very careful, all egging all the time, not wanting to approach when he doesn't feel comfortable doing so. Yeah, I think specifically between these two players, they've gone well past the point of Yoshi versus Wii Fit Trainer. It's very much now. It's Suarez versus John Numbers. Like, these two have figured each other out and are adding layers on layers. Because they played Wednesday, they played Thursday, now here they are again on Saturday, uh, just figuring each other out. Yeah, and that was also really smart there from Numbers, knowing that that's an option that, uh, that going for the grab while the opponent's in the corner, he spot dodged it. Finally opens up, takes that stock, but Numbers already haven't taken about 29%, and he has two healthy, untouched stocks from Suarez that he needs to deal with. No, I agree with you, man. He's going to be chased here, but the Numbers, man, I don't know, man. He, he, it's really hard to just, like, steal a stock from Yoshi because uh, he's got that consistent double jump armor. But... However, I will say Numbers loves foot story Yoshi. Numbers will do it. If you are not careful as Yoshi, if you give him the opportunity to let him footstool you, then he will absolutely do it. Oh my goodness, man. That's a good piece of information, which I'm sure Suarez is probably familiar with to begin with. So this is kind of scary. <gasps> and all of a sudden, it's an even game. This is the thing. Like, those big plays that Suarez was having, yeah, they were managing to get him, like, a nice, healthy oh. lead. But Numbers just has a game plan. He knows what he needs to do against Yoshi. Just throwing out these anti-airs, getting the damage while Yoshi is off stage pretty consistently. Just nickel and dime him until it's actually a lead for Numbers. Oh, yeah. And this is basically we working into a reverse three stock. And it's exactly what you said. It's just like uh, <laughs> just making these plays to making it count. Hundred ten percent on Suarez. Keep in mind, he was yeah, three stocks to one, massively in the lead. And think about what that does to somebody mentally. <gasps> okay, but numbers still can die here. One reverse up tilt into up air will take it. One up smash. There are a lot of kill options. Numbers has to be careful about. Yep, potentially a down B, but man, the fact that numbers has a lead at all right now after losing the first two stocks in the game, it's kind of wild. Oh, there it is. Yeah, reverse three stock. And yeah. Suarez is not happy. Yeah, Suarez shaking his head. And it's the sort of thing where, you know, he ended up that third stock, or sorry, the first stock, rather. Um, he ended up taking it really patiently, throwing out egg, egg, egg. The first, don't, <laughs> the first stock. Um, of, the, of that match, of that game, the first stock, where, you know, it held onto it for a really long amount of time. Um, oh, no, I mean, like, Suarez's first stock. Yeah, well, I mean, that also. I mean, just the fact that he was at 214%, being very careful, you know, able to get little bits of damage here and there. Um, and the thing is that that was a very close game, right? But that was a close game where Suarez almost zero to death John Numbers at the very beginning, and Numbers still took it back because overall, this Wii Fit just kind of has a, the Yoshi figured out. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's so much mental damage to get reverse three stocked in. John Numbers, again, the level of confidence he's playing is like polar opposite of what we saw in the tilt they set earlier. We 
We actually got Yoshi retreating the ledge more often than we fit to, the, to a degree. Oh, that up tilt though, it can be such a devastating combo Ooh. starter. <gasps> so deep! I'm surprised Numbers didn't try to, uh, I mean, I know he didn't have much room to, but didn't try to, like, really mess with Suarez on the way back. Yeah, I, I think he definitely wanted to, but the header gonna be Mark right there, and now Yoshi trying to uh, close the gap. Yeah, Numbers knows how to match out of that egg. He's not going to be buffering any unfortunate options while off stage. And oh, oh my goodness. That's just getting tiny, getting teeny weeny. Oh, no way. He doesn't even find the mark on that combo starter. And now it's John Numbers with stage control. Yoshi has to land. <gasps> oh, yeah, but he's looking for the up tilt. Numbers knowing that's starting to throw out tilts of his own. At any moment now, the stock could get deleted for either player, and they both know it. Numbers able to get even more damage with that header, but he needs the kill. More damage doesn't help. Finally manages to do it, and... Oh, man, if you're Suarez, how do you clean this stock up? Like, Numbers is not falling for these up-tilt up airs. He's too grounded. Yeah, after that first game, I swear, Numbers just flipped the switch, and he's playing like a whole new beast. Oh, 61% already on Suarez. These damages is 1%, and oh, if that header had actually connected. No, uh, oh my god, this is so dangerous here now. So much extra credit being racked up, and John Numbers poised for this top four. But uh, I don't know, man. Suarez just needs to do something here. Oh, no way! Dead. Oh. Number, like, just look at, look at everything in that last... That, the exchanges that happened there. Numbers crouched in the corner because he knew, knew that uh, Suarez was going to try and go for the back air. Suarez actually takes that stock, but might be too little too late. You know, Numbers was able to make this sort of comeback happen last game. So, technically, it's feasible, but as it stands at this moment, it, Numbers just... Oh, man, the confidence he has, as he was saying, the power behind every option he chooses. Oh, oh, yeah, here we go. Just getting an extra bit of credit, and it's just so, so painful to watch, especially for like, Yoshi. He's just like, he did this on Wednesday. He just had a really good run, but now it's looking like the John Numbers show. <laughs> I like the idea of trying to go for the berry and possibly even more damage. But uh, Suarez is able to get away from the worst of it. He needs to, yeah, he's going deep. He has no end. Yeah, he burned his double oh, jump there. Oh, wait. Still has another opportunity to recover here, and Suarez on his last legs. What a attack. Oh, a That's shield. a broken shield. Yep. I think he walked forward just a little bit, which then when the opponent is falling, will just push them off the stage. So technically, Yoshi can uh, kill someone at zero by doing that. That's, what, that's the kind of counterplay that you gotta be ready for, especially if you have this so much experience that you're talking about, but uh, I don't know, man. It is looking so rough. Are we actually, hold on a second, are we actually gonna see another, like, reverse the restock? Oh my goodness, man. Suarez oh. is bleeding here, but closing the gap, doing a very good oh. job. We could see a game five if Suarez commits here. that forward error. It's no not enough way, to actually dude. kill just yet. But Numbers taking all of this damage. He's now at 131. And Suarez looking like he's figuring it out. Trap Numbers at the ledge no here. No way. That oh. time he rolls away, but perfect roll. Just barely. And that's deep breathing now in effect. One sun salutation will kill. One forward tilt. There's so many moves from both players that could end it. It's, uh, it's just so emotional, man. Reverse three stocks coming into play. Not going to get that combo. Oh, that's it. That's going to be it. Fighting tooth and nail. Suarez almost bringing it back from the brink. But that's the thing about comebacks. You have to play perfectly. There are only so many mistakes you can afford to make. And Suarez just made one too many at the very end right there. Yeah, jumping back from the stage. He wanted to go for a down air here. You see they come out. Numbers anticipating. Throws the sun. Yep, taking it in 3-1. What a hot finish right there. And that solidifies our top four for the rest of the tournament here. Zeno, Saga, 34. We have four players left. Tilde and Zamba hanging out on winners. And then, uh, unfortunate for Suarez, just finishing in fifth right there. John Numbers advancing the top four. And uh, we had our other top four finalists earlier make it through. Uh, who do we have on the end of things? Um, it's Tilde, Sin uh, Tilde, Zomba. Oh, and then Sinji. Sinji, yeah, uh, Sinji's yep. waiting. There we Sinji, go. Uh, so we're going to have Sinji numbers.
You get to commentate that. But yeah, I think we're going to order a commentary break and we're going to bring yep. you top four in a bit, so don't go anywhere. Easy, but honestly, the Maybe. rate that New York has been going, we might have to start doing the same for Tilde Zamba. These yeah. two young kings of New York City constantly bouting out every Wednesday here at CNO, but now they're taking it to the weekend. Well, the thing about this is they're about, you know, they're fighting every Wednesday, but there's always the same victor. Tilde has had it. This, you know, like, had Zombe's number in the bag as he's managed to do the three-peat. And maybe it's going to even be a four-peat right now because he's looking hot tonight. Like, we might be on the verge of a new dynasty here at Xeno, but Zombe been playing extra spicy as of late. Not going to be doing too much with that neutral air, though. Figuring out how to land onto Falco is a pretty tall order given that Nair, albeit a great button, kind of on the slower end. Yeah, and Falco loves it if you want to do something slow. Ooh. Now, one thing is that, you know, with this percentage range, oh, it looks pretty good for Tilde. But don't forget, Nair, Side B, there's so many options that Zomba can try and drag him off the stage and end his life extremely early. Tilde has to respect it, has to be at least a little bit fearful. Like, figuring out opportunities to go in is going to be super important for both of these uh, players because with Tilde, one little touch and he's getting a ton of damage off. But if he overextends even just a little bit, he's getting fried by Zomba. Did, so did he... I think he wanted to grab the, the gyro and he messed it up just a little bit. Got the jab instead and that left him open for that back air. Gyro knows no loyalty. It's <laughs> only to Rob. Oh, these up smashes just barely whiffing. That's I think it's the second one that Zomba has perfectly outspaced. And right now, the, those big combo starters not connecting into the kill moves. Zomba surviving at 164. Like, Zomba has a really good idea of how to just stay out of that burst range that Falco offers. It's going to be the back air that manages to catch in that situation. But as you're highlighting, a lot of these combo starters just are sort of not leading to much. It's just sort of tit-for-tat damage right now by Tilde. Very uncharacteristic, both of the player and the character. Oh, as you say that, the combos have been coming out 97% already. And oh, look at that positioning. He's looking to finish the job. Goes all the way up there. Doesn't actually find its mark, though. And now both of these guys deep in the red. These, their stock can drop at any instant. Yeah, especially as there's no plats to retreat to and the battle finds its way to the ledge. This is the position that Zamba wants to be in. Great shoe cap from Tilde, although Zamba's staying reserved. He's not going to fall for these tricks. Oh, Ooh. there it is. We know that Tilde likes to go for that side B, isn't over eager about it, but can shield that up smash. Oh, just an immediate response, though. Tilde not letting Zomba take a lead and do anything with it. You know, that's probably one of the better aspects of this is that while Falco's moving fast and if Rob makes the good call, Rob is able to, you know, end that stock out early. But if Falco <laughs> makes the good call, you're here for a Ooh, minute a and you're taking plenty of damage. 107%. He brought him onto the platform, took him off, took him down, went on the world tour. Zomba still is unable to find oh. a single hit. That's the first one. If that Nair didn't hit, that up smash was connecting. And how about, let's just oh, put that one on. I don't know. Tilde, can you give us a third? Can we see the third? Yeah. Yes, we can! Game one's gonna go to Tilde. Uh, and that last stop, those guys were going even, you know? It, it always felt like Tilde was, in, was, you know, starting out in the lead, but then Zomba would slowly bring it back. No chance to bring it back in that last game. Oh my lord, Tilde. The fact he up smashed three times, he caught the nair every single time, and it was this spacing of it. Notice that he was like perfectly at that range. There wasn't even any fire there. If you uh, if you go back to check it, it was just that blind spot just spiking him right through. All right, moving ourselves into game two, and it seems that Zama's bringing us to Kalos Pokemon League, giving him a lot more space to sort of maneuver, although this is a bit of a dangerous one, I feel, because there's a lot of lateral space that Falco can also combo across. Ooh, one thing that is notice notable is um those side platforms. You know, they can help out with combos, but also might help out with getting off of the ledge. Gonna be relevant for both players here, actually. Uh, but this is kind of similar to that last stock. All of this damage uncontested being put on Zomba. Whoa, oh. 
It's just really easy for Falco to control that aerial space, and the pick into Kalos immediately proving its value as we got to tech it to the wall. That wall going to be proving vital to the survival of Zamba, but so is finding these landings. Yeah, no, the, the stage has already paid for itself twice now. Finally, Zomba surviving. Maybe gets that first hit. Maybe gets that big starter that he needs. 50 at the very least, already been able to do a decent amount of damage. Down tilt, still not enough to finish it. That stage coming in clutch for Zomba. Oh, how about that, though? <laughs> All you need is the down tilt confirming for your up smash. And the fact that it is such a hard stage, all of that rage managed to help out Rob a ton. It brings us to an even game, even though it looked like it was supposed to be Tilde's game from the start. Yeah, oh my. He actually managed to, I think he pressed Z in order to re-grab that uh, gyro right there. Really smart, recognizing that it was in Tilde's hand and he was kind of forced to throw it. Getting rid of Gyro is such a big aspect of this matchup. If you're regularly fighting a Rob, you need to have a response for that Gyro, whether it's using it yourself or just getting it away. I mean, the one thing that we're also kind of seeing is he'll go for the reflector on the grounded Gyro, which I believe changes its ownership. It does, you're correct. So it's like a very low committal. I mean, still a little bit dangerous, especially if Rob is, you know, right there, but... The yeah, and least. that's why there's a bit of a layer of commitment to it, because you want to have your reflector ready and waiting for Rob Laser. Because if you put it out just to reflect Gyro, well, then you wait for that reflector to go away, and the laser's following suit. <gasps> oh, and I mean, grabbing Gyro has its own benefits, as Tilda is showing right here. Able to add on all this extra pressure. And 105% back air doesn't quite do it, but... Another one of the those. way that he, like, looked a little bit in. It's what? just to stay and read. Nair and up air are going to trade. Both players just gonna sort of deal with it as they move on to last stock. Tilde immediately bringing us out to the blast zone. A bit early to call though. Love the idea of going for that down B. A nice way to extend the combo without being too oh, committal. It's, oh no, he's off stage. I don't think he has a jump. Zomba recognizing that. I don't think he got his jump back. In fact, 77%, 84, it continues. He needs to find his way back to the ledge. Beautiful angle on that upbeat. See the way that he angled it in so he could ride the wall into the shooting straight up. Phenomenal from Tilde. Gives him the least on life that he needs as he's moving on the hunt to try and get this kill. We're once again taken to the top from Zamba. I love that he's been adjusting to go for these really high recoveries and staying mobile while all the way up there. Because you know that Falco is going to be able to jump up and meet you in the sky really easily. <sighs> that up tilt. I guess up tilt is not going to be comboing into those kill moves anymore. Back throw to put him off on the ledge. This is so dangerous. If you are Tilde, it's dangerous to death. Wow, Zomba managing to... The survivability of Kalos came in so clutch for him. Keeping him alive, letting him find the opportunity to turn things around. That's going to be 1-1 right now for the count. Yeah, and that was a very interesting shift in momentum because I feel like we entered game two hot off the trail of that game one. A very oh, explosive yeah. ending from Tilde and a very explosive beginning here from Tilde. But ultimately, I think the space of the stage just really helped Zamba that much. And I think that one of the big things that happened at the end of that game was the just the overall like trapping and the juggling. And it was as soon as he took that jump, Zomba knew to go in and just really take as much mileage as he could off of it. Oh, speaking of taking mileage, though. Bull. Yeah, coming across the plats of town and city is going to be a no-brainer for both of these characters, I feel. But of course, Tilde is going to be the initiator here for game three. And I feel like when we break down Falco for parts, that jump really is the make or break of what makes him a solid character. So good on Zomba for scouting out that jump where uh, Tilde could otherwise be vulnerable. I like the idea of that recovery, but Tilda liked it even more. Uh, sorry, uh, Zomba liked it even more because it let him get some extra damage in. But now he's, oh, this is the sort of thing where they're even, and before, Zomba was down by a lot and managed to still take it. So being even is a not great place for Tilda. Ooh, and the forward are managing to get the kill as well. Very good offstage play from Zomba. Just staying reserved, let the projectiles do most of the work, and then ended out with quick rob buttons. Nice job there. The chase down <laughs> coming into effect. The fact that that side B just zips from one side of the stage to the other and combos into a kill move. 
man, you, there's nowhere that you're safe. Tilde always seems so exact with where he wants to put his hitboxes. And it's so funny because I feel like a lot of players here in the city, they'll take a very methodical and sure approach to victory. Tilde, he's not going to let you have room to breathe. If he wants you dead, if he wants to get in the scrap, he will bring you into it himself. <laughs> I agree 100%. But the thing is that, you know, he's scrapping it out. He's getting in there, but he's not finding the kills when he needs to be. Even now at 125%, this Zomba is surviving. Even now, how did he live that? That was fantastic DI. And all of a sudden, he's back down on the ground. This is the sort of thing where Tilda has to be scared. Yo, that restand when the first up tilt wasn't enough? So I'm getting a little greedy. Is he going to pay the price for it? Or is he going to cash out big because... Nope, nope, nope. We are landing on the bird. Too bad of a landing, though. That Nair not going to do the job. Arm Rotor gets it done, though. Salty, we're back in the 1-1 count. <laughs> we got here real fast this time. Oh, yeah, and oh, here is this sort of thing we've seen time and time again. These low percent combos from Tilda. A beautiful, I think it was smash DI on Zomba's part to fall out of the move. But he did not actually get out of the danger. Tilde is still staying on top of him. That pressure that you mentioned, oppressive. But Tilde finally finding, oh sorry, Zomba finally finding these, these moves, these quick aerials that are, oh no. Don't speak too soon, my friends. No, we are on the hunt. <laughs> Speaking of hunt. Oh man, going Yo, I'm going to keep it real there. with you. I am waiting for one of these points during the set where Tilde just goes for the up B. Just absolutely dives in. <laughs> Because he's gotten this close time and time again where back air and up air just aren't doing it. But Rob is big enough that you could just drag him along with Fire Falco. It's absolutely possible. And that's going to be an invaluable oh. mix-up as the set goes on. Because Tilde is still struggling. He's struggling and this is the thing. He's... Yeah, he is struggling, but he was doing all right, you know, just getting damage and damage. But now he's the one in the corner. Nice cross-up. Rob can kind of struggle to deal with cross-ups at times. But Tilde now, 113%, the back air, just barely finding it. That up air was so close to connecting. If he had gone a little bit earlier on it, he probably would have gotten clipped because of extending his hurt box. Where games one and two seem definitively in favor of either of the players, this was a very, like, tug of war kind of game where the oh, damage yeah. was just layered so heavily from both like, sides so quickly. Yeah, that was so close to connecting. Dude. And that would have absolutely killed That really came down to the last 10 on that yeah. opportunity, but that was like best frames, of five territory. Dude. We're not out of it just yet. Tilde needs another, and we're going right on back to Kalos. I definitely agree with the stage pick. I mean, we saw just how good it was. There are some advantages for Tilde as well. The fact that he has access to a wall jump on those sides. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, honestly, Whoa, what no, keep on jump. making the blot noise because it's absolutely appropriate. <laughs> he used the wall jump to die. <laughs> Well, to choose your own adventure, and you chose wrong, buddy. I don't know. I feel like that was a rigged choose your own adventure. <laughs> it's like going hey, to page win, tells you lose. Yeah. Shake. Oh, he's done. No. He's dead. Another wall jump ends in disaster for Tilde. <laughs> We're at the 3-1 count immediately. We're not even out of the first minute. And Zama's looking to close out this game. And all of a sudden, we're seeing some strange options being picked from Tilde. I think that he is just shook right now. He does have another game to work with. You know, he worked hard in that last game to bring it to a 2-1. Oh, and he's still working hard right now. Oh, yeah. but Bro is swinging. He needs to try and level the playing field here because Zama has managed a definitive lead coming into game four. But like, he needs to get aggressive. He needs to stay fast. But he also needs to make sure that he doesn't overextend. Because now this is twice where he's pressed just a little too hard and Zama has killed him for it. That's, he can tech it? No, he can't. Wow, that was... That was Samba's game to win. We just needed to get to the win screen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we hadn't seen a domination like that yet. You were, it was just push and pull. You know, sometimes, you know, Tilda would have these crazy nutty combos, but very rarely would they end in taking stocks. But right there, that was just, oh, textbook edge guards, textbook things that Rob can do. Ooh, and... He kind of rocked him that game. Yeah, I mean, if you're Tilda, though, I feel like you got so rocked that you can shake it off. You know what I mean? You gotta. No, that's the one that invites a clap back. That's like, all right, yeah. you clipped me, I clip you. 
All going right. into game five, that's exactly the mentality Tuttle Day needs to hold on to. Because, yeah, taking, <sighs> look at him, taking that deep You got to take that swig of water, take that breath. I think that the very beginning of this game is going to say a lot. If Zomba just continues with that momentum and just starts slaughtering him once more, or if Tilda shows that he's composed, that he, you know, knows what he needs to be doing and gets that clap back, that response that I think he desperately wants to show he has. It's pretty much slower though. Wow! Tilda playing. So, this is I'm actually amazed that we have gotten to this point of like the Tilde saga where He's always known for having an exceptional combo game, a really strong sense of neutral, and always able to find those reversals. But Falco, at the end of the day, is destined to control the pace of a match by slowing it down. Oh, Unfortunately, man. Rob doesn't care for those kind of tools. Wow! I mean, you were talking about the Firebird. Not quite like that, but the fact that he managed to get that angle, get away with murder right there, this is going back and forth. You gotta even. save it for game five, dude. It's a hell of a check how has gone if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh man, look at these two just being able to low profile the laser. There are all of these tiny moments where if they were just barely missed space, they'd be dead. There's been multiple occasions so far, just in this one extension of neutral, where Tilting's just barely dodged dying. And now he's found that reversal he needs. Up smash gets it done. But can he find a lead? A really sharp angle from up B manages Ooh. to bring him back to stage. And also, even though Zumbo was forced to recover really low right there, Tilde did not try to chase him. Knew that that's a risk he's not willing to take, especially when he can just go back to stage and do these combos that he is known and famous for. Across these past four games, Tilde has constantly died for overextending. Not just taking a lot of damage, not just lose total stage control, lost stocks and games at this point from even tiny overextensions. Right there, that overextension costing him once more. That time just jumping up a little bit too high. I think he sort of realized that and for the most part now, oh, never mind, he hasn't realized it. He jumps right into Zomba's arms. As he, especially as he's maybe getting a little bit desperate for a way to finish off this stock, he knows what happens if Tilde is not put, if he can't put a stop to him. Yeah, no, this is looking like a runaway stock for Tilde now. He's up the, the lead. But <laughs> Zomba's proven that he can take these stocks very easily. Oh. Back here not finding the mark there. Another missed tech. This is going to be huge damage already on Tilde. He saw it, recognized it, and goes to that platform, saving Grace, bringing him back onto stage, and possibly the chance to get another one of those big combos going. Foreigner finds his mark, but nothing else out of that instead. Zamba getting really shaky here with these neutral airs, trying to find a landing one. It's one of the biggest problems with neutral air. There's such high reward in actually landing it, but it's so well telegraphed. Up smash out of parry manages to even the playing field, though. Oh, and if you're Tilda, that is losing your stock at 100. That's not what you want. And oh, the good DI. Look at this. These combos are not quite going the way that they had been earlier on in this set. And the landing. That was too. a really risky landing, but we haven't seen that from Zamba at all in this set. He tried to read a jump, and that's another one of those overextensions you were talking about. It almost led to absolute disaster for Tilde. Right now, he's trying to find some opening, and can be getting a little bit over eager. Zamba now starting to find his own hits. It's just move for move, but nothing that Zamba's landing is really threatening Tilde in the same way that these earlier moves have done. And because of that, we see Zamba try to threaten that really high landing. This time. We got the platforms from Town and City really helping him out. <gasps> Gets the roll read with the forward air. Not necessarily a stock taker, but at least it sends a message. And 148% right now with stage control in Tilde's favor. Can he actually find the finishing blow? That neutral is still not enough. This is Rob well beyond the point of max rage, and that's a very dead Rob. Tilde clutches it out 3-2 over Zamba and secures his spot in grand finals from winner's side. And he was chasing up there all the time. You saw him going up there, going up there. And then finally, when it came down to it most, that double jump from Falco, it's so high. And here we see it. Yeah, it was the back air. He was just way too comfortable. He probably saw him doing that early on and was like, I'm not punishing that yet. He waits for the best possible moment and then, and then does it. Yep. Take flights. Back air and lag. Yes, sir. Give me that grand finals. Goodbye. 
Really oh. solid performance from both players there. I would not be surprised if we see Zamba again, because you know the boy's going to want his run back after that. He had the pleasure of watching the two of them fight at some point before. Yep, Sinji versus members. Yeah, they're going right into it. And this is the kind of matchup where, like, the amount of knowledge that these two have on each other. They are, they just have such game plans. Then it yet still somehow it's always a toss up, it feels. I feel like it's because both of them are just constantly evolving as players. And by virtue of that, they're constantly picking up something new to take against each other. Because I feel like there's there's no one more aware of how often these two fight each other than Sinji and Numbers. But it's not like they're only fighting each other. No, they're still very active participants in tournaments here in the city and in general in New York. And they've constantly been showing their, their medal all over. Numbers especially has been like really out here playing constantly and one thing I've made note of as of late playing more and more aggressive and effectively aggressive too. Yeah, and I mean, that aggression right now is at least paying dividends 107% onto Sinji. Even if he is playing aggressive, having a buffer of forcing Sinji to approach because he has the lead is a very nice thing for him. And that's deep breathing. Who boy. Yeah, nope. Really good awareness of Sinji, knowing that that header ball is going to extend whatever hits into it. Yep, and he went for the ledge attack specifically. That move does have invincibility until the hitbox comes out, so it is a fantastic way to challenge those smash attacks at the ledge. You know, I highlighted for a moment how Numbers has been playing a bit more aggressive as of late, but I would also like to shout out the fact that Sinji himself also tends to play a bit more aggressively against the likes of Numbers, because both of them just have an iron will when it comes to waiting out the other. Oh man, and now we're, look at this, 139 to 111. This is the sort of situation where whoever takes the stock gains a massive advantage. Number's probably gonna be living here. He's able to juke, dodge that Hydra, gets back to stage looking for an F tilt of his own, but oh, at the moment, both of them survive in here. Just barely, however, good DI on the forward tilt and surviving at 152, but that oh, landing oh, oh. was crazy. Numbers taking huge gambles, just landing right in Sinji's face. Oh, and he gets a tech on top of it. This is the sort of thing where these two have played so much, they know what to expect from the opponent. Both character and that trade, working out for Numbers. He's at 180%. There are so many things that could kill him here, but he's still going to be hanging out on the ledge, trying to get whatever advantage he can. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans are already afoot in game one as Sinji has tried to That's even up the stock high. deficit, and he'll do it with the apple bonus fruit. Yeah, okay. Th that high up B, there's no way that Sinji wasn't going to kill him yeah. for it. Oh, but deep breathing is such a... Th I, that was so good. <laughs> the the, 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 the loop-to-loop around, just trying to avoid the aggression from John Numbers off stage. Where are we right now? <laughs> this is the... I, honestly, in this game, and when I mean this game, I mean Ultimate, these two, it feels like every time I watch them play, something different is happening. There's the evolution of play going on, and right now what we're seeing is the offstage game. Shinji not scared at all to challenge Numbers, and Numbers is welcoming him to do it, as they are just like having a crazy brawl with nothing under their feet. You know, Salty, typically we'll refer to the layers of a player understanding their opponent and then adjusting as necessary. You know, the Yomi levels, we'll talk about how some players are just on, you know, a couple of layers. The, the Yomi levels are kind of all right. These two, immeasurable Yomi levels. <laughs> they adjust so much when they have to play each other. It really is like looking at different people. But at the end of the day, it's just two masters of their craft. Oh, both of these flagship representatives of these characters. And right now, numbers showing that what happens when Pac-Man doesn't have to lead, has to approach, has to get everything started all on his lonesome, because he's at not, not numbers at 94%. Oh, it did. I don't like that header ball, and neither does Sinji. Really good call out with the forward smash there, happening to extend because of it. And now, Sinji in position to even up the damage, too, although a bit hard-pressed to do it, because I'm still... Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, buddy, hey, <laughs> hey. He's knocking on the door. you going to let him in? <laughs> oh, man. 
49% on numbers, he's still relatively safe, but Sinji also only at 105, meaning he doesn't have to worry about that many of Wii Fit's kill options. He can kind of play the way he wants to, maybe take a few risks in neutral. Oh, and he's doing that, just jumping in numbers, face and throwing out, trying to get the pressure started. His really specific zone that he's just been standing in Numbers' face has been helping him a lot because we've seen a couple of times now, Numbers is whiffing his grabs because Sinji's just not in position where he's expected to be. Oh, now with deep breathing in effect here. It's the sort of thing where Sinji, I love this, slows it down, knowing that he can just run out the clock on it, and there it's gone! And as soon as it disappears, that's when he chooses to go in for, honestly, a very committal option. <gasps> That was just a hilarious standoff. Both players at the Hydrant. <laughs> They're both aware of how explosive Hydrant can be in this situation, and that's exactly <laughs> why. Great presence of mind from Numbers to tech the bell inwards oh. on the stage. Percentages are climbing very fast as we reach the last minute and a half of this game one. Oh man, 151% on Numbers. Deep breathing has expired, meaning that grab's not going to be able to kill. 58% on Sinji, looking for a forward jump, trying to dodge that, and there it is! Yeah. Finally, a little bit of unsafe pressure. I think that was a hitbox of up, uh, forward air. Maybe he was trying to call out a jump or something like that. If we can get a look at it, normally that forward air, very safe, but it seemed like it was higher than normal. Yeah, the fact that up air starts kind of in front of uh, We Fit, really helping her in that situation. Yeah, that he, was... He went for down air. He went oh, for down air right before. Hold on. Yeah, Hold on. I know that up air is safe. And then he's moving. He's moving. Yep. See, he takes out his boots for down air. Put those Tims away. We're in the dead of the summer, boy. And we're back on Stadium 2. It makes plenty of sense to come back here because I feel stage-wise, the platforms can be used offensively and defensively really well by Pac-Man. Yeah, I mean, I still think, like, when you think about that game, how it went, that Apple was literally, I think, frames away from punishing numbers roll. So these two are so neck and neck that it's literally coming down to frames, coming down to pixels in terms of who ends up being the champion at the end of the game. The win box actually helping out numbers. Very rarely do you see the win box of uh, Sun Citation be relevant. But yeah, I feel there. like nowadays it's like a once a tournament kind of deal for numbies. So like, oh. All right, we, yeah, we hadn't seen a lot of offstage shenanigans, and now that we're back in the, uh, you know, in-game <laughs> one, we're going to take that. It don't matter, though. Numbers still out for the kill, and a great start to game, game two for him. Oh, yeah, and once more, now that Numbers has the lead, he can kind of play to that. Oh, knew that he, he sort of realized at the last second that, oh, yeah, no, I do have to shield this. <laughs> we shield smash attacks, and they don't hurt us. <laughs> Innovative Sometimes. new advanced tech from John Numbers. <laughs> oh, good job from Sinji baiting him, trying to uh, punish him as much as he can while Numbers is trapped at the ledge. And honestly, even despite the fact that Numbers had such a massive lead, he hasn't really done anything with it. That's the first time, oh right now, that's the first time he managed to get like a two-hit combo in. Well, yeah, I think right now he's just sort of playing passively because he knows that Sinji's gonna just rush in on him. So he didn't want to, you know, give too much of an opportunity to lose that stock quickly enough. That 46% that he managed to gather up, hilarious. 46% could have been nothing. But instead, Numbers does find himself in a pretty uh, meager lead, I'd say. It's less the percentage that matters and more the stage control, I feel. Because this yeah. is Numbers' stage. Yeah, I, I mean, percentage can matter a lot because A, once Sinji gets to the point where he has to start worrying about Wii Fit's kill options, it limits what he can do, what he can feel comfortable even attempting to go for. And the water displacement from the Hydrant actually protects Numbers from taking even more damage off of that up throw. I think I've seen the header ball go in more, like, obtuse angles in this game than, like, a long time. And... Numbers getting that up air out of shield a lot right now. But the thing is that, he, you know, he punished a forward air with it just again. But forward air is safe. Like, if Sinji starts adjusting and going for forward air and then, you know, an evasive option, ooh, that could be a... That could happen at a really pivotal moment. Possibly help Sinji make a comeback of some kind. Why did Sinji let him get that? Why did Sinji let that happen? 
He just watched as numbers fulfilled his game plan. Yo, bro, I'm gonna do my win condition real quick. Do you mind? Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, we got him. Yeah. It's such a kind of deserved that one. I mean, that was the first time we've seen numbers really aggressively try to stop the side B. Um... Yeah, look at this. I think I don't know if he had a jump. He, and, he, yep. he ends up hitting the um, the pellet, the pellet, and then at that point he's just too low to start like doing stuff. Because <laughs> even though like Pac-Man can recover from pretty far, I don't think he can recover from like, the absolute edge of the blast zone. I mean, if he had his jump, possibly because he does get his side B back once the I believe once the pellet despawns. It takes a little bit though, because he's got to like actually tumble out of it and then like start it back up. Regardless, didn't work out so hot for him. So yeah. instead, we get a bit of a change of scenery as Game Three takes us to Yoshi's story, and I... we're already at the ledge and out for the kill. Oh yeah, and the, this stage's ledge in particular is going to be even more unique. The fact that Sinji is going to be going out there to you know throw the fruit against it, we grab them so he has them in hand. Yeah, as we're seeing right now already. Uh, and the fact that Numbers has a wall jump and can be doing even cheekier things while he's at the ledge. Yeah. You ever notice that uh, we fit those push-ups while she's crouching? Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I, yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> Don't worry. Just in case you didn't, Numbers giving you an opportunity to check it out. Yeah, and also it's worth noting that he's crouching in the corner where there's the tiny little lip, which, you know, we fit already to crouch. <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> the lack of effort behind that power tilt, so expertly timed. Oh, uh, it's just, okay. We're having like these weird standoff moments, and then somebody just like the first person to move wins. <laughs> and it keeps on being numbers, and numbers is the one initiating these weird standoffs. Like, he's just in the better position. Yeah, like he's not approaching. He's just like hanging back. He's like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll take a little bit of stage control when you give it to me, but... Ba -ba -ba. That was off the the trampoline, too. That was I... so on that. That entire stock may have been the most disrespectful stock I've ever seen in Ultimate. From start to finish. I mean, the thing is, he just started really effectively using Sinji's own tools against him. Okay, just read it. Just just hit him hard. Just do it. Just do it. I dare you. I double dare you numbers. Oh, okay. This is about as literal of an example as it gets for someone like camping in your face. These two are literally a fire hydrant distance away before they like actually initiate. And I think it's worth noting that the last two games we had very aggressive, you know, going off stage, doing all this stuff. We were talking about that, and now this is almost like a return to, you know, five years ago. Sinji being like, no, I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna be a lot more careful, get my fruit, and Numbers is like, fine, whatever, do it. I still am winning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going up. He's like letting him be as patient as he wants to as long as Numbers it's is still so winning It's so bizarre at the end that of the day. Sinji's just like letting Numbers get away with a lot of very silly options in neutral. Like that. <laughs> I feel like out of all the options, that should be the one that Sinji's allowing the oh, lead. Oh, can we don't? Hold on a second. No, no, he's doing like this slingshot thing where he's running <laughs> into the hydrant, and then once he bursts through, he gets an extra boost of speed. <laughs> and I am... <laughs> he's trying to be as cheeky as possible right now. I don't even know... I don't even know if he's doing that just to entertain himself, man. I think someone's got to have fun. <laughs> Oh, wow! I didn't know you could wall jump while you're in the lag of, uh, air dodge. It's such a weird situation to be in. Like, why would you ever want to? I mean, honestly, it's a very clever thing that Numbers is doing right here. But this rinse, recycle, repeat. Numbers has not found a way past it and finally back with some stage control. But for how long? Half a second at most. Uh, if, if even. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. not covering the space that the hydrant was able to cover as well, and just a poor angle there with the key bonus. <gasps> oh my, that's a green, oh sorry, the red trampoline right there, that was so scary. Numbers though, surviving at 183%. I mean, this is- He's a just taking his time. 
He's a getting... walk in the park. When, when we're done with this, we got, we, we got to check the stats and see how much damage. Why are you deal. allowed to tag that? You're at 191. <laughs> He's cheating. Oh, how are you living that? You're at 206. This is scripted. <laughs> this I... is a scripted loss for Sinji. <laughs> That's how you take it? That's how you get the stock? Honestly, and, there is no better way for it to end. Uh, uh, and, okay, so unless Sinji gets, like, the dumbest kill in existence, this is, uh, yeah, gonna kind of be it. It's Because even if he did manage to, you know, slowly climb his way back, two and a half minutes on the clock. Sinji is the type of player that needs a lot of time in order to make comebacks happen. And just After wasn't that kind of set, Sinji is the kind of player that needs a hug. God damn! <laughs> what just happened? Also, wait, look at Number's expression. Look at his expression. He's just like, uh, okay. <laughs> He's like, that's <laughs> how you die! <laughs> oh. Can we freeze frame on Number's when his eyes go wide during that, like, head? We don't have the no, technology No, tell yet. them to stop. Tell them to be like, hey, hey, Zomba numbers. No, they're uh, immediately we need going uh... into it, my friend. You don't, you don't have enough time. <laughs> no! <laughs> Go back. Frames. Ah! From winners, in which uh, Zomba kind of stopped. Uh, but we'll see if maybe, perhaps, you know, numbers just had a really strong showing. Well, how about numbers having a really <laughs> strong start? Zero to death on Zomba to remind him, losers finals ain't no place to play around. Man, loser's numbers right now is looking like a demon. Already lapped him in percent, which is easy to do when you start off the game with a zero to death. But 84, oh my lord. Hey, uh, Devin, real quick, I just want to make sure, <laughs> do you still have the footage at, like, double speed? Are you still speeding up right now? <laughs> or is that seconds. just numbers absolutely demanding that this game be his in record time? Oh, man, and it's still going. He's lapped him twice now. We're not even at a minute on the clock, and already it feels like Zomba's about to die. Oh, you better move. Yeah, you, you almost spoke too soon on that one. I, what does that speaking that I just did? Yeah, Scooby-Doo noises <laughs> speaking. Yeah, it's in the same ballpark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is, if you're Zomba, do you just start, like, playing even worse to condition numbers into thinking you're a worse player than you are? I don't really know what you do besides, just, like, play your best and catch up because numbers gave you a lot of work ahead of yourself. This is such an aggressive numbers. <laughs> he comes up with a rising forward air. It's not really close to killing. The game just sort of lied to all of us. That forward tilt, though, very much. Yep. So... One thing that I think about is how in Tilde versus Zomba that we saw in Winners Finals, um, Tilde would get these really big combos, but then not get the kill, and then eventually Zomba would collect himself and get the combo back in his favor. This clip was so quick that we have to include the 3 2 1. You know what I think about is the fact but that Numbers was just sort of playing with himself for three minutes in the past set, and this one, he finished game one in half that time. And it seems like both players are going to have to start aggressively because Zaba now very aware about how Numbers is willing to play out this set. Buttons are flying left and right, and it's the Rob buttons that are working out as Game 2 brings us right on back to Pokemon Stadium yeah. 2. I do know that this is a matchup that Numbers generally does not like. Uh, he really, just the fact that Rob has these boxing tools, things like forward air, things like down to, he's dead. Um, yep. Well... <sighs> It seems like the, the the state of things is that these two just beat the heck out of each other. Like, this isn't even... Do, do they have fun doing this? Oh. <laughs> just punching each other in the face? Hey, I think you, you put it best, like, winning's fun. That's true. And when you really break it down, like, parts for parts, it kind of makes sense how these two can just sort of, like, beat each other's faces and absolutely crumble the other one. They're both high damage, high combo characters that can play really well off the ledge and off stage. And they have the tools to slow down the pace of the match or ramp it up on their own call. I mean, the other thing is that their combos oftentimes lead into a kill. The fact that, oh, you know what, that's what happened at the first stock of last game and this game. You no know, big combo ends with a big finisher. Speaking of finisher, Numbers needs to find his own if he wants to try and stay in this bracket right now. 
Oh, 133%. He gets deep breathing, but... I'm curious if that late down air hit actually leaves him safe enough in those situations. No good DI is going to actually keep him even safer. I think deep breathing might have saved him there. I don't know if it was still in effect right as the hit landed, but not going to save him from that. Um, three stocks to one right now. This is looking mighty grim for numbers. Yeah, no, this is, I'm getting shades of game one just with a uh, different player at the wheel here. And now seeing a lot more of those high recoveries from Zamba, I think are the just really good calls because Weefit does not have the tools to get up there and make your airspace dangerous. She can make the ledge pretty dangerous. That lateral and low space off stage is deadly. Yeah. Oh, again, missing that tech. I don't know if that air dodge, oh, so the dash attack was on purpose, but I mean, damage is damage. Numbers even now struggling to find even a way to end this first stock from Zomba. Whereas Zomba is like, eh, all right, 94% on numbers. He's looking like he's at death's door already. Get the throw, no laser to get the kill though. <gasps> oh, and a rare situation where numbers just not able to super hoop his way back. Oh, I mean, the set count right now is 1 1. It is very briskly gotten us to the 1 1 count. That is true. I mean, do you think we're going to see an even game between these two? I don't know. So far, we've just seen incredible snowball performances. Yeah. And one thing is that it feels like that game, the fact that, as you mentioned, Hangman, that started going for those high recoveries, uh, Zomba avoided the real danger zone. That is what cost him so dearly in uh, game one. Now, with this Game 3 returning us to Stadium, I'm very curious to see what the adaptation here is because I don't know if Numbers is going to be able to get away with another Renegade game like we saw in Game 1, nor do I think that Zob is going to be able to run away with a game as we saw in the previous. Well, I feel like this is another thing about these players, you know, and these characters, is whoever has the lead, you know, stock lead specifically, can really just carry that. So, these oh, next... Oh, yeah. these two snowball really hard. And I think both of these players, just within this tournament alone, have been able to sufficiently prove that. Yeah, so these next, I'd say about 20 seconds, could be very decisive. Numbers managing to get a lot of damage onto Zomba, 140%. There's that high recovery. Can he even figure out a way to deal with it? Instead, he elects to use that time to get some deep breathing. Help him out in the future like he does. All right, and within that 20-second window you gave us. Very accurate uh, prediction. Although we're almost going to see an even game immediately following it. Zomba on the hunt to try and get this kill at the ledge. And he's not going to be able to get it just yet. Really good DI from Numbers getting out of that situation. But once again, jumping in, going to be met with disaster as the stock count is 2-2. <laughs> yeah, Numbers worked really hard for that kill, but it's kind of undone. Deep breathing is in effect, meaning that we could have some nice damage here. But Numbers is fishing for these neutral airs. Zomba spacing around them, able to open him up and do all of this damage. Stop that. That's uh, enough. And he's dead. And Zamba said that's enough too. Jeez. Oh no. Numbers off stage. That was a really risky air dodge. And I don't know uh, if this is a good position to be in. Zamba looking to just snowball, just like we were projecting. While he's in charge of the ledge, at any point he could just go off for the arm rotor kills, go for some sort of ledge play. Like, playing at that ledge is so dangerous for Numbers. Ooh, but Numbers doing a really good job putting on some pressure, baiting out spot dodges, staying just within range where he's able to get these hits and Nobody was expecting him to just be a bad at with the back air. <laughs> just why? Oh, man. Ooh, going way up there. Yeah, these aerials from Rob, the Zomba being so careful not to throw out anything that can actually be punished into a death. Meanwhile, Member has been like exceptionally scrappy here. Unfortunately, though, the slow return upwards with the hoops not going to be enough. And Zomba adjusts the count to 2-1 his favor. And just like we were talking about, Salty, we are right on the verge of seeing that run back in Grands. Because as a reminder, Tilde is waiting up top in Winterside Grand Finals. Indeed. 
And numbers, I know he goes for that sort of the slow uh, hoops, specifically to max up the opponent's timing. That It's part of what makes his offstage game so tricky and why you see so many players unable to deal with it is actually the fact that it's subtle. You won't notice it when you're just a spectator, but when he slows down just barely, can really mess up with the opponent's timings. Oh. Yo, talk about a mess up. Really rare situation there. We see the directional air dodge instead of the Z drop from Zamba. Oh. That was a potential zero to death or a start to this game four. Very rare situation to find ourselves in, but Numbers isn't going to complain. No, in fact, building up plenty of damage on his own. Oh, neutral air. Such a strong move. Does tons of damage as well as setting up for those other hits. Especially while deep breathing is active. Like oh, that yeah. buff is such a big deal for numbers. And he got that F tilt in just before deep breathing expired, and he managed to get another one. Once again, those higher recoveries from Zomba, they are good in keeping, you know, numbers from actually ending him, but it gives him a lot of time to be able to set up for what he needs, like the next play that he's trying to make. Uh, no air dodge to grab the gyro in that situation. Would have been helpful for numbers, but instead, deep breathing gonna help him plenty as we see a wild angle dash attack covering Rob's up as he sticks those little plastic arms up and gets stage spiked because of it. I dare you to react to that. Did you tech that? Because I didn't tech that. I'm mad as I, hell. I don't even know if that was techable, dude. <laughs> We can check in the replay, but I mean, in no no human is going to be able to know exactly what angle and everything. And numbers taking that stock lead, you know, didn't manage to you know hold on to the stock himself, but already be able to deal 97% onto this Rob. A slick air dodge from Zomba keeps him from dying right there. In a situation like this, I feel like it's important not that numbers like maintains the lead, but rather. He's disrupting the momentum that Zamba has. Because Zamba's coming into this game for playing hot off the previous. And has been looking very comfortable thus far. Numbers throwing a big wrench into that means that effectively playing at an even level right now. And because of that, Numbers has that potential to snowball again, like we were talking about earlier. And that's just what we're seeing now. The pressure right there being so good from numbers. The tricky hitboxes he's landing. And now with this massive lead. Oh, yeah. Zomba knows he needs to make some big plays. He's trying to go off stage like that. But numbers is too cheeky. Not letting that sort of thing catch him. Oh, okay. Never mind. He's going to take all that damage. Yep. Pop. <laughs> Rob, it looks like it should eat shields, but it kind of doesn't. It doesn't do that much damage, honestly. It, it, it's funny, for like all of the pressure that Rob is able to produce, not a lot of it is shield pressure. Let's count our lucky stars that that's the case, though, <laughs> all right? Character's oh, good man. enough. <laughs> Why did you know that was the angle it was getting sent at? And Why did you know that was going to happen exactly the way that you did? What do you know that we don't? We've um, seen up smash from Wii Fit into header ball on numerous times. Not once do I think I've ever seen numbers do it with the intention of actually using the ball at that angle. Uh, I mean, listen, numbers is the kind of guy I remember this dude watching him lab max 99% Lucario. Like, max, absolute max Lucario. Uh, with a bunch of, like, equipment and everything in the Smash 3DS training room. Like, the guy is a lab monster, and he knows exactly where everything is going. And let's see if that'll help him out as we move into this Game 3. Numbers managing to bring it to a Game 5 so much better than in Winners, where, like, Zomba just kind of absolutely obliterated him. This right. is far from obliteration. This set has been an absolute dissection of what makes both of these players fantastic. Because at both times, they've looked like they're playing phenomenally. But it's been more or less training the baton. Not an even battlefield, but rather Zaba playing great. No, Numbers playing great. Then Zaba playing great. And Numbers bringing it right back into his court. But we're running out of games, Salty. We're in game five. This is Losers Finals. There's no further opportunities to prove yourself than here. And now. Yeah, and Numbers definitely looking to prove himself by ending this stock. He has the Sun Salutation in the bag. Looking for an opportunity to do it. He needs, but he can't even get back down to the ground. 
Oh, you saw him go for it right there, but Laser just a little too quick. And all of a sudden, Numbers, despite being up by so much, he is now trapped at the corner where he might die. I think the header ball even getting involved in the Rob up air. Really good situation for Zamba as he's been trying to turn this reversal slowly but surely. <gasps> the recovery from Numbers was so good right there. But now, being trapped at the corner like this, he's taken so much percent. And whoever takes this stock, it might decide who wins this entire game. Up throw that might do it. Just barely surviving beautiful DI. That's phenomenal DI. Look at that. It's going to take a Nair with max rage. Practically fresh, too, because of all the other stuff that Samba had to throw at him. They're talking about throwing. Drop the sun on the boy. It's an even count, but it's taken us a couple of minutes to get to this point. Oh, Numbers trying to get cheeky with that gyro Z drop, but didn't actually get the hit. And now all of a sudden he's taking about 44%. Zomba pushing him all the way out there. A side B is always something he has to be scared of, especially when he's that deep into the blast zone. I think one thing that Zomba has grown very cognizant of is that when this battle's at the ledge and Numbers runs out of resources, he's able to just get away with buttons. And because of that, he's built up so much damage so safely. <laughs> that, that ball almost came back to bite numbers. But as it stands, he's alive at 96%. Not a great position, but he is alive, meaning he might be able to get this run back. Already able to dish out 102 onto Zomba. Looking for some type of finishing blow, possibly, but Zomba now with some stage control. <gasps> Pushed all the way out there. Gonna throw the gyro. Just excellent gyro control from Zamba as this game has gone on. But even greater is Numbers' ability to mix up how he returns to ledge. There's that slow hoops that makes such a big difference. Especially because Rob, you know, has pretty long-lasting hitboxes, but not long-lasting enough to really cover it. And the close-in hitbox from the laser managing to save Zamba as that dash attack with the deep breathing would have certainly killed him. Oh, man, I think that was pixels away from hitting the blast zone. Numbers at 172%. That's a dangerous re-grab. That's an even more dangerous laser, but that's phenomenal DI. Living at 186. Numbers figuring out what to do here. Oh, it's proving to be a breathing. very difficult task. And there it finally is. Nair after Nair after Nair. Finally, one of them connects. Numbers, though, with deep breathing, might be able to close out this stock very quickly. He needs to because if Zomba hits him once, it might be a ton of damage. Already, that's what we're seeing. Numbers needs to take it and... Oh, trapped, though. Zomba doing what he can to press forward. 42% manages to be the end after that exchange. And Numbers is on the move. Oh, he's looking for an opportunity to throw out the sun, but Zomba knows that stays very grounded. Already numbers at 60%. This is the type of extra credit that Zomba can be more than happy laying claim to. Of course, especially sitting at 203% on his second stop. Damn near any sweet spot hit will kill, and it's going to be the back air, in fact, that finds its mark. And now, Numbers in the hot seat. He's already got a decent amount of damage on him, and no sense of stage control as he's forced immediately to the ledge to try and even out this damage de deficit. I mean, probably won't be relevant, but also look at the time. Almost two minutes left. There might come a time where, at the very least, Numbers is going to feel a force to approach. <gasps> oh, but that that's the combo starter that we know. Not able to get that much off of it, but now with deep breathing, who knows what might happen? Retreating to the skies, I think, is the best call for Zama because he knows that he doesn't have to worry about trading for moves. With Wii Fit in that situation, he just has to wait for the right counter hit! And That's down tilt to down smash gets it done! Missing the tech at a crucial moment. Zomba reacts. Gets the finishing blow, and now he is getting his chance for the run back against Tilda, moving us into grand finals. It came down to that last situation. Look at look that. Down tilt, miss the tech. Hold on a second. Actually, I want to go back and look at that sun salutation. Numbers knew he was taking to the air, right? What am I doing? He was definitely go. knew he was t going into the air. He goes for this sun salutation just a little bit too early, though. It was the fact he went for the full hop. Really good mix-up from Zomba, knowing that was numbers he not was... able to tech that? Why wouldn't he? Wait, what happened? So, watch really quickly. So, we go through the, the situation, and it's whatever, right? Early sun salutation, definitely not a good call. And then the down tilt, forcing out a situation here. 
he's put in tumble and then red sparks well no i think it's the yellow spark the green there's the green i was yeah. gonna say that would have been a situation well, no, just the, been... the red is from the impact it's the green sparks we okay. see afterwards that signifies that it could have been tacked but it really did like zomba the fact that he went for that full hop like he definitely has a good sense of when he needs to be mixing those sorts of things up but now he's gonna need to pull out all of the stops we already saw what happened in winners it was game five very close but tilda took it so what is he gonna need to change in order to you know reverse that fate i think he's just got to keep the uh, momentum up he's just got to play fast play hard if he can be really consistent with his ledge play like he was in the previous set, I think he will be in good shape to try and at the very least threaten to reverse the bracket. Otherwise, yeah. Tilde's walking out of here as the uh, champion and possible start of New Dynasty, like I was saying. Yeah, I feel like for Tilde, that's what's on the line here. It's not just another tournament. It is like the streak is starting. It's the statement that is he is trying to make. And oh boy, is he making it that up air, mixing up with the DI and the up smash on that platform to actually close out the stop. He's looking so good right now, that angle. Yeah, no, that was, you were not catching him with that arm rotor. I uh, commend the effort, but it wasn't happening. Game one on Smashville just <laughs> seems like a very interesting call i would say because this invites a lot of scrapping and i feel like falco is able to really make the most of it here meanwhile this is the situation that zamba needs to be in he needs to be able to keep falco at the ledge and more importantly than that stop falco from invading center stage because you need that little canopy of the platform and that little bit of relief of space from the ledge to at least react to falco's buttons otherwise you get brought to the combo city Tilde now, he's looking for some way to actually close out this stock. It's something that in winners, he would struggle at times to actually do. And, you know, even if he is up by this much at the moment, if Zomba doesn't die, then like how there is no win condition. And there's the down air. All right, we have the even stock count, but these are this is a far from even situation. That's probably why Zomba was comfortable going here, is the fact that the ledges function like that, that down air is that much more of a devastating tool. At the same time, I know for a fact that Tilde likes this stage. For those ledges specifically, the fact that down tilt ends up like being able to hit people and spike them into it and send them all the way into the blast zone. So kind of trade off for both players. I can understand why we went here in game one. Yeah, it's just a bit of a risky call, and right now I feel like it's a call that's paying dividends for Tilde as he's sitting pretty with the second stock. Zamba right now in the driver's seat as he's trying to do something with this damage. He still doesn't have a jump. Oh, I don't even know if he got it back. Okay, there he actually has it, and it gets him back to the stage. And he even gets rewarded with Gyro. Ooh, and that's actually a pretty nice reward, being able to get all of that nice, juicy damage onto Zomba. But Oh, that could be big. Good job jumping out of there and managing to get back to the ground, but only for an instant. No catch with the down smash, though. Did you see how far that tech roll went? He, like, teleported six robs away. <laughs> and Zombo was chilling there, too, charging him. He was like, I got this. That's enough to do it. And now we do have a last stock situation. And this is the sort of thing where if you are Tilde, you, you are wanna... winning game one, is oh. what I would say if Rob wasn't so heavy and the Zama's DI wasn't so good. How did he know to DI for up? Oh, I know why. Um, it's like a matter of, I'll talk to it after because that this could do any other way. Is he actually Not dead from rage. that? No, give me another one, Zamba. Oh. Ooh, that was a really good high call from Tilde. No way, I thought this was just in for Tilde in the bag. Even that's not enough. 182%. He's refusing to die. And th no way. Yeah, no. <laughs> he was just not in position to properly time that down air. He was too busy getting to the stage on his own. Oh, yeah. Looking for the down tilt right now. But really good from Zomba. Not allowing that to happen. Is that enough to do oh, it? Oh, that air dodge cost him. And even Zomba's confused. He's like, all right. You can give that to me. I'll take that. Thank and you. The thing is, Zomba didn't die. He just was refusing to give up his life and staying alive. I think stock two was like 150, 160. And then that right there, he was at 180 before he actually, like, he didn't even bite the dust. He was at 190, dude.
You know, Zamba is definitely like he's in it for the long haul with this one. The fact he survives the up air, which the reason why he survived it is because he di'd for up air. Because if you get hit by back air, you're dead. It doesn't matter. So just di for the thing that you can survive. There's no reason di'ing for like the thing that you know is you're gonna die from anyway. Really smart from him, and that's what kept him alive, and that's how we managed to actually take game one. And with game two bringing us to town and city, the bank shot with the laser there was so cool. It's so unnecessary, but really good from Samba. I feel like this stage actually invites a bit more uh, layers that, while definitely favor Tilde, and we've seen plenty of times before why, I actually feel like this space works out really well for Rob as well. Especially the FD variant here. But it's not so great for him when he has to land. Oh, even more damage possibly. Another back air, but not enough to actually get the kill. The very first frame of Nair is threatening the kill there? Okay. Sure. Back throw just to set up the ledge play, and I like that call a lot. <sighs> play too fast and loose with the ledge, though. That I'm not that big a fan of. And I, I like that Tilde has been going for the ledge mix-ups very consistently with his uppies. That, because you, you do not want to be too predictable, especially with a spacey offstage. Yes, on the but, other hand, yeah, the last few times, Zomba has just, he's been able to handle it, either with like an instant move, like a dash attack or something like that, or just letting him hang back and the fear do the work for him. It's one of those situations, too, where it's like if you do the mix-up enough times and you don't do what's expected, the, you, you've suddenly reversed the roles, where the mix-up is no longer a mix-up. It's the expected protocol. You know, also, oh, oh, this could be huge. He's You're dead. dead. You're He's dead. actually dead. You clocked in Max Rage. He brought you to the ledge perfectly. And that's why Rob is here to stay as a character. There's no ledge of ability, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good Rob is. He's not going to be surviving something, a blunder like that. And now Tilde, I mean, a comeback worse than this happened last game from Zomba. So this is still absolutely within reason. The thing is that Tilde needs to actually be closing out stocks. Oh, a couple of forward airs just to check the space. I like that Zama's going just for these little checks in neutral as opposed to going for some sort of combo string here because given the percentages, he can't really afford to overextend. Yes, he may have that stock lead, but you kind of want that security against the likes of Tilde. He is probably dead here. He is yep. very dead, in fact. Down smash at the ledge is certainly going to do it. And Salty, we're on the verge of seeing a very quick bracket reset. Yeah, and that was also Tilda's counter pick. There was definitely things he wanted to take advantage of on that stage, and he just didn't have a chance to. That was Zomba looking absolutely pristine. And as soon as he made one of those bad mistakes off stage, Zomba would take him all the way. Think about how the like these tiny little mistakes at like mid-range percents he's dying for. Whereas he's surviving until like 180. Like, of course he's gonna be winning. I mean it all adds up to Zomba favor. Numbers don't lie. Alright, so here we are for game three, back on town and city, and I Again, I think the stage just works fine. It's a really good Falco stage. I think it's especially a really good Tilde stage. Yeah. It's just, the honest is on him to actually execute and prove why. Because right now, Zamba is playing fantastically. Oh, man, look at that. Nice solid damage in order to get things started here. 46%. And, you know, we haven't really seen so much neutral air spam. It sort of, you know, the fact that these two have been playing against each other quite a lot. It's probably Zomba recognizing and respecting the fact that Tilde has shown he can play around it. I think it's just the notion's gotten beaten into Zomba that a lot of Falco's better tools are anti-air tools. And some of them just so happen to start his combos. His very heavily damaging and potentially Ooh. killing combos. I mean, potentially killing, but we have not been seeing them actually kill. Zomba's playing around them so well when it really comes down to the wire. He's never getting hit by up tilt into back air to actually take the stock. Instead, oh, he's the one who's doing all of the damage. Town and City coming in clutch for uh, Tilde right there, though. Bigger blast zones on the top helping. Just on, just from side to side, constantly threatening to kill. But an excellent reversal from Tilde. He's the one who's going to be breaking first blood in game three. Second and blood, though. Gyro? I guess, yeah, no, at that percent, sure. Yeah, you got it, bro. Yeah, nice job getting that, uh, getting the parry and realizing that the down tilt is the only move that can actually hit at that range. 
Oh, here come those tilde combos. 94% in the blink of an eye. And if he goes up there, oh, he's looking for it. But he also knows not to overextend. That can possibly mean all of his work will be undone. Oh, that's Rob with almost no fuel. He does not get to fool around in the stage again. Maybe he will on the next stock. An excellent catch from Tilde. And that's that neutral air. He's shown that he is, if he has the timing down, up smash beats it out. No problem. Little dunk on the head and potentially a situation where Zamba can find the reversal. Nope, instead just going to be letting go. Little Falco double laser. <laughs> <gasps> that was so good. The wave land on the platform. He knows that getting back down to the ground immediately is a priority. And for him, it seems to be working out for the most part. Oh, but trapped at the ledge once more. 100% off stage. We've already seen... Actually? No. No. Falco don't got hops like that. You know, I was actually just about to highlight Salty in this set. We're finally now starting to see Tilde make a lot of use of side B, which is a tool I feel has been completely absent from the last time these two were playing in bracket. It's He's saving it for the reset. Doesn't want to hold all of his cards too, uh, you know, too far out. Yeah, but I mean, it's looking like a very grim situation where he does have to prepare what he's going to be doing in the bracket reset because Zamba is playing on the verge of this reset now, and he's going to make it so if this ledge play extends in his favor, oh. even reacting to the platform adjusting as they come onto the stage. And now, oh man, he's off stage, no jump. He's forced to side B. The roto arm, no, he doesn't go for it. Oh, he's too late on that because of that. And there's the reset. Quick 3-0. Teacher, I have several questions. <laughs> now let's see. What did Tilde do wrong here? Tilde, like... Oh, man. I am, like, perturbed. <laughs> let's go with perturbed. And... They like traded back air to arm rotor. And it was like Wait, one. Is that what happened? It I thought he just jumped into it. Three, two, oh no, you're right. Tra Wait, no. And he flew faster. Alright, but now we are in the reset. You know, the set cap between these two, totally even. Uh, but that last uh three games we just saw. Oof for Tilde. Yeah, no, that was just exceptional play from Zamba. And, you know, let's, let's add a little bit of shenanigans, just a little spice to the end of that set. Just in case you forgot where you are. Because here in New York, we don't just play fair, we play to win. Oh, and this is kind of, this game is starting off like how we've seen them do so many times before. Tilted, really nice combo, getting about 80% in the, you know, within moments. But then, not really able to continue beyond that, and Zomba claws his way back ever so desperately until right now, as we know, it is an even game. I would actually say Zomba favor, considering the fact that Zomba has been regularly surviving until 150, 160 plus. So, do you know what I think the problem is, at least with these two? What? Oh. Okay, Zomba. You know what I think the major problem is? Is that Falco has an exceptionally good combo game and has no particular struggle with killing, as we see from Tilde managing to even up the stock count. But these are two separate aspects that make Falco a strong character. With Rob, he has an exceptional combo game and no struggle killing, and those two aspects are seamlessly joined. They are fluid between each other, and because of that, I feel like Tilde is losing out in situations where he'll win neutral and then have to find the kill, Whereas Zamba will ne win neutral and follow that up seamlessly with finding the kill. And I mean, you're right. The other thing is that these two might have a similar sort of, you know, play in that regard. However, Falco offstage, much, much worse than Zomba offstage. Again, second time that's been happening. Is that is that a regular thing we should just be expecting for? Is it just the new weather pattern? <laughs> up air out of combos to win? Okay. I feel it's just the, it's the curse of species, man. All of that power. Cosmic combo potential. Itty bitty recovery mix up. Oh, nice spacing from Tilde until he gets grabbed. And then, oh boy, the pain comes. Yeah, no. We get right back into the mix, but Tilde refusing to give up. He takes a deep breath along with that up smash. I believe he up smashed uh, Rob Jab 1. 
which that's just like you know how much you know minus each move is if you know that oh jab one i can up smash that you know falco's up smash out of shield actually does give him a bit of leverage on moves that you know are not going to be exceptionally plus on block so if you do know your numbers like that, uh -oh. Falco definitely the kind of character that can take advantage of you, but take advantage of the situation there as Zomba as he nabs away game one. Man, everyone's been missing techs right now against Zomba. But it's like, I mean, it makes sense. The way that he's setting him up at these percents, at these very particular angles with the moves that he does. Uh, but if you are Tilde, it's just react quicker. <laughs> Don't miss your techs, bro. It's definitely a rough situation to be in, because I feel like at this point, what's expected of Tilde is just be better. <laughs> and given the pressure of this situation, that is asking so much of one person. The man just got 3-0'd to have the bracket reset on him. This is four matches in a row in Zomba's favor. Yeah. This is rough. Zomba's been playing exceptionally lately. And it's not like this is an isolated incident. He's been performing incredibly well at the local events as well. He's been the absolute shining star of Staten Island. And if he manages to walk away with tonight's saga from loser's side, no less, this is a really good way of showcasing your skill as a player. That was such a good roll. I don't know if that would have broken shield, but that very easily also could have shield poked. Zomba right now, he this actually... Not the normal pattern of, oh, super early percent combo for Tilde. Uh, and actually, I think it's working out better for him. With him being the one with Rage means that he can maybe set up for a kill himself. Just sort of going for these bouts in neutral and then, like, leaving a little bit of space to react in turn. I think it's working out really well for him. I love the dash out. Just go in, start to put on a little bit of pressure. No commitment on the buttons means that you just get to react. Oh, that back throw really big. Putting Tilde off stage. This might possibly be yeah, the end for him. Tilde just suck the bird right in the beak. No. <laughs> but, and it responds immediately. Tilde with that up smash. We've seen that that's been one of his regular go-to kill moves. But it's like... You know, as you were saying before, Hangman, compare what moves they're killing with. It's often like Tilted with a hard read on the up smash, either out of shield or something, you know, just uh, catching a landing. Whereas Tilted is just like setting up these kills off stage. Yeah, so I'm just sort of flying off and deciding, hey, you didn't space that perfectly. You'll die now. How dare you not be perfect? Like, he just demands perfection from his opponents. You know, it really is something nice to see, too. Just taking a moment to really appreciate how far both of these players have come. <laughs> Talk about how far we're going to come. How far are you going to go into the blast zone? An amazing hunt from Tilde. Paying off fantastically as it evens up the game. That might also be the, ne the necessary game changer. You know, getting something like that, putting momentum back in his favor. It felt like he was kind of struggling to kill and also kind of maybe struggling to keep his head totally in the game. And after you do something like that, that might be the start to something beautiful if you're, uh, oh! That was cute. The fact that side piece and lag was interrupted by the gyro just meant another hit from Tilde. Just great presence of mind. And Zamba is coming back home. He's gonna find his landing and you're gonna find an additional laser with it. Oh man. <laughs> Tilde is landing with, without a jump, but it's still been fine for him. Both of these players now trying to, right as I say that, catching again! How many times is he gonna get away with that? And this time teching. I think it's the fact that he knows for a fact that, oh, great catch from Tilde. Brings us the 1-1 one, one count. Yeah. I think it's the fact that Zamba knows that like Falco has to jump to get up there in the air with you. And he can't seamlessly act out of his jump. He does have to get into the air first. And during that time is where he's at his most vulnerable. So you might as well swing on him if you can. Drag down up air is going to be doing it. Yeah, and I think also maybe it displaces Rob's hurt box in a way that makes it even trickier for Falco. It may do that as well, which is just an additional layer of help. I believe it also might be his fastest aerial. That part I wouldn't be able to say for certain. That's a pop quiz I did not study for. <laughs> up air. Is it Rob's fastest aerial? 
I want to say it would be forward air, but that's just the, Well, know, forward air isn't going to help really. No, I know. It's combo. just, you yeah. know, just semantics. Yes. Game three is bringing us to Kalos. I Pokemon. still think it might be up air. We will check on that later. Not on stream, just for my own personal whatever. My, my peace of mind. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. All right, getting into we're getting into the zoning war, my friend. Hit his gyros and lasers alike from side to side. I wasn't really expecting a uh, zoning war. <gasps> You're de not dead. Wow. Yeah, no. Totally this time, learning his lesson from the winner's side, where he was no wall jumps from Kalos. We're not oh, gonna yeah. do that because every time he did that, he died in explosive fashion. Yeah, and it is worth mentioning this stage was Zomba's counterpick in Winners. And uh, uh, <laughs> this was Zomba's counterpick in Winners, and it really worked out for him. The bigger Blast Zones just saved his skin so many times. Ooh, and I like the turnaround there, too, so we can get the Rising there to cover space. This is the one drawback of going into Kalos, the fact that it's just so big. <laughs> There's so much airspace for Rob to navigate freely. Yeah, those up smashes, they you know, they were working out really well for Zomba or for Tilted rather earlier, but they are risky. They are committal, and right there we saw why committing to them at the wrong time can be absolutely devastating. Now Tilda has to, you know, fight his way back from this stock deficit. And Zomba looking to exploit the fact he has this lead. Yeah, just taking a quick uh, look just for the stage bands, just so people are aware. We have consistently seen Final Destination and Pokemon Stadium 2 locked away, which is why we haven't seen those stages at all. And I think that's just a really good decision from both players because you don't want to fight on either of these the combo fiends, ledge play monsters with no platforms. And playing on Stadium against both of these could also be disastrous because of the ability for Rob to control space. Oh, no jump. Oh, no, he did have a jump, but it was the wall jump that actually led him down the, to that. Oh! And that just falls out of the up air. That was just really good SCI. Because, like, the Potential or not, my man was out of there, and he definitely needed that. Zamba's still sitting the stock count up. Yeah, and this is a similar situation to what we've seen before. 171%, and, like, Zomba doesn't even know what to do about it. He's probably looking for a down tilt. Even forward air isn't enough. Ooh. Up air from Tilde does manage to tie up the stock count. However, that's still Falco at 137. He is at death's door, and Zamba's throwing him right through. The 2-1 count immediately, because Zamba's making damn sure that Tilde does not build up any type of a lead. Oh, and the spot dodges and the air dodges from Zomba to get out of these combos are really, really good right now. Oh, right there. I think he took his jump, though. Yeah, but he gets back down to the ground and he's forced to respect that neutral air that Rob has. It just can be so hard to fully chase that robot down. Just going for consistent damage out of these combos, even if they aren't killing, it's threatening that big damage. And likewise, Zombie <laughs> have to eventually get himself back to the stage. Eventually, these combos are going to start to threaten kill. That we're gonna do it off the up air. Yes, it will until they brought us back to an even game And if you notice he was going for that up air waiting to see what happened or the up tilt rather up tilt waiting to see what happens Up tilt waiting to see what happens until he was confident that someone was not going to air dodge and then he fully committed to the up air Just not showing his hand too early. I think is a phenomenal adaptation Ooh. from Tilde because you can't really afford to just sort of go on cruise control at this point. You need to be playing off of reaction. And baiting out those responses from your opponent are the best way for you to do that, especially in these high tension situations. <sighs> oh man, things are getting dicey for Tilda though. 116% trapped at the ledge. Going for these big moves, that's gonna be it. Another one of those missed techs. And despite the fact he was keeping it so even, Zomba right now one game away from getting the entire reversal and taking the first offline Xenosaga since the pandemic. This is looking crazy, man. We're coming down to the end of it all. Just look at this play. He knew, he knew way ahead of time and he put out a down tilt too early in fact. Thankfully he moves fast enough that Zama <laughs> responded in turn and got his down smash follow up just like that. One game away. Yeah, right now you can see Tilda doing a little bit of soul searching, realizing that this is, you know, he was originally going to be making such a statement. Four Xenos in a row. But right now, he is pushed to the brink. Zomba is only one game away, and Tilda has to fight like hell in order to 
get basically a reverse 2-0. There's no other recourse for him. He needs to be doing that. This is one of the issues I feel with when you're like you're playing hot as a player and you're on the come up. You've got the placings and the winnings to really prove it, and you need to just be reminded you are not the protagonist of this story. Everyone is on their journey as competitors. And right now, we have two parallel storylines running of players looking to prove themselves at the top of New York City. There can only be one winner. And right now, Zamba's on the verge of proving his time is now. <laughs> I'd say Zumba, that if Tilde didn't will, bring us into story time of his own. I will say though, Zomba's been having plot armor throughout <laughs> these sets today. He is surviving <laughs> hits in ways that I never thought, but no plot armor can save you from that back air right at the ledge. Tilda, you know, I think that little collection he did, the self-reflection was necessary because he's looking really good here in this game four. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, breathe a little. Check your pulse before you go back into the next game. <gasps> oh, no! Uh, talk about a pulse. We are flatlining, folks. <laughs> it's a 2-2 two -two count, and it's all Tilde's fault. He thought he was going to land on that platform. He was doing this whole cheeky little combo. He was going to land on the platform, reset, do all this damage, but just zoop, barely misses it, and he cost him his own stock in the middle of his own combo. Oh, that loss of momentum could mean disaster for Tilde. <laughs> as Samba's running away with another stock. And that was the moment. I feel like that's like the moment where everything changed. Like, the fact that he died in that way and now another stock taken for its time. Even but, really good DI, not gonna be able to help Zamba there. So they still got some life in him as he manages to bring an even stock count. Oh, but he's pushed at the ledge, and we already know what happens at these, even at these lower percents when Tilda's at the ledge. All right. Late hit of Forwarder is not going to be given much. Zamba consistently DIing these hits from Falco superbly. If you have a Falco problem, look to Zamba to study for how to get out of these combos because when a big body like Rob doesn't have to even pretend to favor Ooh, these combos, you know this is a phenomenal Ooh. Rob. That might and be it. Down air gets it done just like that. Zamba is tonight's Xeno Saga champion. Fighting tooth and nail, getting knocked into losers by Tilde himself. All of that is a memory, a distant memory. Absolute as he resets the bracket, 3-0, and then managed to win 3-1. Tilde only managing to take one game out of six once we get to Grands. That was a spectacular performance from Zamba. All right. And if you just needed further testament to like how much effort this kid has been putting into his play, just look at tonight's bracket. Also